Coming off a historic regular season, the Red Hot University of Central Missouri Mules hosted the University of Indianapolis Greyhounds in the opening round of the NCAA Division II playoffs. This match, up on November 23, 2019, wasn't just a classic because it pitted two great teams against one another in postseason action. It is a UCM classic because the Mules' big players came up big when they had to. In 2019, UCM averaged more than 200 yards rushing and 346 yards passing per game, and they put up 45 points per game. Defensively, the Mules racked up 39 sacks, intercepted 9 passes, and forced 26 fumbles, but they'll tell you the biggest number for them was 11, as in 11 wins. And that 11th win came in dominant fashion in their first ever meeting against the University of Indianapolis. Quarterback Brooke Bowles set his season high in pass completions with 27. Those passes resulted in 377 yards to move Bowles over 4,000 passing yards on the season and 8,000 for his career. His favorite target, Shea Wyatt, had nine receptions for 176 yards and a pair of touchdowns to move past 2,000 receiving yards for his career. Devontae Turner and Colby Wilkerson combined for almost 100 yards on the ground to keep the Grand Hounds honest. Hope you enjoy the fireworks in this week's UCM Classic, the University of Central Missouri Mules against the University of Indianapolis Greyhounds in some playoff football action. Mules with our national anthem at Walton Stadium Kennedy Field as we get set to go between the Greyhounds and the Mules. You know, Joe, a lot of people uh, listening to the game on air, a lot of people watching the video cast and, of course, picking up our broadcast. I know there's a big group at the Missouri uh, Warrensburg, the Veterans Home, having a big watch party here today. I want to give a shout out to those guys, watch a little bit of Mules football today. It's really interesting. Uh, Missouri Net was there to do a couple of stories a couple of weeks ago, and there's a gentleman there. I have no idea. Has five purple hearts. Unbelievable. How about how about that? Five. Pur- how do you five. get five purple hearts? You're tough. You just keep going you back. Just keep going. Give me more. That's that's amazing. Absolutely. Captains are making their way up to the giant mule head. There's still a possibility if the mules win today, and a lot of things happen, and the chips fall differently, the mules could have another game potentially at Walton Stadium Kennedy Field. It would be the regional Super Region Championship game. It would be the national quarterfinal game. But a lot of things have to happen. Captains are out at midfield. Let's send it down to Danielle Soxie. What do you want to call? Tails. You want to call? He said. Tails. 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 Okay. Calls tails. Calls tails. Sorry. It's heads. Utah Central Missouri has won the toss and has chosen to defer. You heard the, you heard him say University of Central Missouri has won the toss and has chosen to defer. The coin toss is presented by your Edward Jones agents in Warrensburg, Alan Brandt and Steve Farr. Edward Jones making sense of investing. Thank you, Danielle. And the coin, of course, hit. You heard Katie <laughs> Richardson, our video coordinator. 
I think the coin, I think the coin got her. <laughs> you never know. Our officials for the ball game today is assigned by the NCAA. These are officials right out of the GAC, the Great American Conference down in Arkansas. Ken Rohn at referee, Carl Iwitz umpire, Jeremy Goodrich head linesman, Kevin Smith line judge, Jim Hines field judge, Rhett Cranford the side judge, and Cantrell Gatson the back judge. Officials presented by. Murdoch Banner Financial Group, serving Central Missouri for more than 40 years. Your team for financial planning is Mark Banner. Craig Cohen, Chad Appleton, Carla Curry, MurdochBanner.com. Time now for a key to a mule victory. Keys brought to you by Key Realty. Warrensburg's real estate expert since 1977. Key Realty, Warrensburg. Daniel Soxy, what is your key today? My key is to keep that run offense going. Make sure I know that... Indy's really good at stopping the run offense, but we just got to keep powering through the line. Okay, run the football for Soxie. What do you got, Joe? Special teams. You got to make sure yeah. that you're flipping the field. Make sure you're converting when you got to convert. Exactly. Special teams. Those are my keys as well. You know, the thing is, like Danielle's talking about, you've got to run the football. Everybody knows the mules want to pass. Everybody knows the mules can throw the football. But they are a very, very good running team as well. 218 yards a game, 25th in the nation. you got the two-headed monster with Devontae Turner and Kobe Wilkerson. You've got a quarterback who's mobile. He can run. If you need to bring in a third guy, you got Roosevelt Abram. He can run. You've got receivers who can go on in and around. Still, you have to run the football. You're going to have to do that to establish your passing game. 43 degrees, winds out of the south-southwest, 7 miles an hour. Your official game time and temperature brought to you by Warrensburg Ford, the best vehicles at the best prices. East Business 50 in Warrensburg. Visit them online at warrensburgford.com. We're going to kick this off right at 1 o'clock. 43 degrees. Back deep for the Greyhounds, Aaron Matteo and Toriano Clinton. Got to watch out for those guys. They are rock solid. Diddle will tee it up at the 35-yard line, middle of the field, and we are ready to go. He will approach, puts the right foot in to it, high end over end kick. That's going to bounce into the end zone, and a knee will be taken by Toriano Clinton. That kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today, warrensburgcollision.com. So here we go. We're going to see that high-powered Indianapolis offense right out of the gate. Looks like Coach Westfall wasn't really pleased with the kickoff, but it works for me. Got it in there. You don't have to worry about the return. It's exactly what you want to do. Edwards will be out of the gun. Two to the near side. Clinton will be split out to the left. McKellar to the right of Edwards. Now they're going to put a man in motion to the near side. Hand off into round. A couple of nice blocks to the 30, 35, and up to the 40-yard line. That'll be a gain of 15. On first down, nice blocking the end around run by Toriano Clinton. Yeah, not for Cody Bell coming up. That game, that one is gone, and you Indy's already up on the board. That's why he get, averages 9.1 a carry. First down and 10 for the Greyhounds at their own 43 yard line. Edwards will be out of the gun. He's got McKellar to his left, two to the far side, one to the near side, tight end in the slot. They're going to hand it off McKellar. Makes a couple of mules miss. He gets into mule territory and to the mule 47-yard line. So a couple of big runs on first down, both moving the chains. First down again for Indianapolis. Ubong Udom had to make the tackle in the secondary. This is not a big offensive line, 6'3", 285, but they've only allowed 12 sacks this season. And when they're allowing your team to rush for 251 yards a game, you know they've come to play. Toriano Clinton to the right of Edwards. You know the Greyhounds feel disrespected having to be on the road, so Edwards out of the gun. He is back to pass, quick hitter, quick hitter, caught at the 40, and he'll be wrapped up at the 37-yard line. That's close to another first down. Well, and I noticed, too, that the Greyhounds think they're going to win this game because they've already got four at Ferris State listed on their schedule on the website. And I think they're going to move the chains. It's right at the down marker. That is a first down, so they're going to move them. So three plays and three first downs for the Greyhounds. Edwards out of the gun. Going to move the tight end in motion to the near side. He's going to hand it off to the right side. It's going to be Clinton, and he'll be wrapped up 
after a gain of just a couple. So that's the best defensive play for the Mules right there. Yeah, credit Zach Oshman. He was on the far side, and he ran straight down the line of scrimmage, and he makes the tackle after the short game. That's the kind of pursuit that the Mules have shown all season, that, that aggressiveness to the football. Second down for the Greyhounds. 13.04 to go here in the first quarter, just underway. Toriano Clinton, single setback behind Edwards. Two to the near side. In the slot is Sarabia, the tight end. Edwards has it. Play action. He wants to throw it. Has time. Fires one deep across the middle. Has a man and will overshoot his wide receiver. That'll bring up third down. Maurice Robinson, the senior out of Tinley Park, Illinois, and able to come up with that. I think that was Josh Terry hot on his heels, and that makes it really tough, that route that they ran, because the safety had to bail. They ran like two posts almost. The near receiver runs to the post. The far receiver is almost running the same kind of a route, but to the far end of the end zone, so there's no safety help over the top. Josh Terry's got to stay with his man. Third down and six for the Greyhounds. Line of scrimmage, the Mule 32-yard line. Might be two down territory. Greyhounds on the air at 50%. Tied in in motion. Comes set to the left side. Mules are going to show pressure. They're going to bring him. Edwards back to pass. He's looking. Now he's going to be flush. That's a hold. No call. Edwards in trouble. Going to drop it off to McKellar, the running back at the 40, and he'll be brought down at the 32-yard line. So he'll get back just to the line of scrimmage. Great job by Jacob Wiggins because he was on pursuit of the quarterback, and he reverses direction and is able to make the tackle down the field for no gain. So it's fourth down and six from the Mule 32-yard line, and the Greyhounds want to go for it. Edwards ran over to the sideline, so let's go. They're trying to establish right off the bat they're here to play. They do, Like you said, they feel disrespected. They think they should be hosting this football game. Davion Bell's going to check in. He'll be at the far side. To the near side, Aaron Matteo. On fourth down, the Greyhounds are 8 of 11 on the year. Five on the play clock. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his right. Back to pass. Edwards fires one deep across the middle, and it's going to be caught for a touchdown. So on fourth down, right down the middle, nice pass, and that's going to be caught by McKellar. Well, that's a bad matchup. You've got Ryan Topper, a 6'3", 214-pound wide receiver going against John Embry. He's an honorable mention all-MIAA linebacker, but you've got an inside linebacker trying to cover a wide receiver, and that's a mismatch that they're going to win every time. Six to nothing. The Greyhounds have the lead over the Mules here at Walton Stadium, Kennedy Field. They take the opening drive, 75 yards, and complete a fourth down pass for the touchdown. On for the BAT is Boozman. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Seven to nothing. The Greyhounds have the lead over the Mules at Walton Stadium, Kennedy Field. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. A degree in digital media production with an emphasis in sports communication will enhance your knowledge in multi-camera live sports productions in addition to writing for sports media. Our faculty members bring real-world experience to the classroom, and students can showcase their work through different media outlets, including live streaming under the MIAA network, UCM CTV, and digitalberg.com. For more information on this, please visit ucmo.edu forward slash DMP. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub with exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. Fancy. Just the Mules couldn't stop them. I think the fanciest thing they did was a jet sweep. That was it. So Boozman will approach. Back deep, Turner and Wilkerson. It's a side winding kick that's going to bounce at the 20 and then go out of bounds. So the Mules are going to be in great field position to start this drive. That kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. And Daniel Soxy, that was pretty uh, pretty easy for the Greyhounds down the field. So I'd imagine uh, Coach Campbell making some adjustments back there. Yeah, of course you're going to see that throughout the game. They kind of pick, picked us up there. Three, Like you said, three first downs for the three plays. Don't want to see that again. Nope, we do not. Bowles will be out of the gun. He's got Turner to his left. Two to the near side, Shea Wyatt. 
to the far side. Ball at the right hash. Now Wyatt's going to come in motion, and they're going to swing it out to him. He catches at the 30, 35, 40. Has a seam to the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, and brought down at the Greyhound 20-yard line from the back side. Shea Wyatt on a simple swing pass almost took it to the house. Yeah, not for Mitch DeWitt showing some great pursuit, but... He had two guys out in front of him throwing great blocks. Great player to start this game. Mills going quick. Bowles out of the gun. Turner to his right. Davidson in the slot. Bowles has it. Gives it to Turner. He'll get it to the 15. Breaks the tackle to the 10. And down to the 6-yard line. We're looking at an old-fashioned shootout at this pace as the Mules have it inside the 10-yard line. First and goal. Devontae Turner looked right there saying, okay, I see you See you that you're one of the top rushing defenses in the country. Let's see what you got. And he just played a little smash-mouth football right there. First and goal from the 7-yard line. Mules trying to answer that UND touchdown. Bowles out of the gun. They have a man in motion. They're going to give it to Turner. He finds his way to the 2 to the 3. Reaches for the goal line and Heady play by him. He wasn't close enough and able to bring it back in, or that could have been a big turnover. Yeah, I saw him start to reach. I was like, oh, we'll pull that back. <laughs> he got it back just in time because there was a defender coming to, smack, to swipe right at that football. But still, great po- uh, positive yardage on that run. Wildcat. Bowles will be split out to the far side with Shea Wyatt. Cam Saunders to the near side. Devontae Turner out of the Wildcat. He has it. He's going to run to the near side. He's going to cut it up inside. And That's going to lose a yard, so now it's third down and goal from the three. That UND defense really tightened up right there. Well, he run the Wildcat from the near hash mark, so he tried to run it into the short side of the field. Didn't really have a chance to sprint it to the corner because there's just not enough real estate there. Here's a big play early on in this game. Third down and goal from the three-yard line. Bowles out of the gun, looks to the sideline to change the play. Seven to nothing, Indy. Bowles has it. Going to give it to Turner. Runs to the near side. Gets a couple of blocks. And he's going to be brought down at the four-yard line. So the Mules got it down to the two. And they've gone back to the four. And here comes the field goal unit. This is not what you want to see. You do not want to be settling for field goals. But that's what they're going to attempt here. Well, that run twice running into the short side of the field really makes it hard to extend it any farther because you just don't have enough real estate. So really, UND was able to use the sideline as a 12th defender. Knowlton on for a 21-yard field goal attempt from the near side. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good, and the Mules get on the board, but they have to settle for a field goal after getting inside the five-yard line on first down. 9.15 to go in the first quarter, 7-3. to three. Greyhounds have the lead. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. I support one student in college with a scholarship just the way I want to pass on a legacy of education. I would like to pass PBS on to the next generation. For more information, call 1-800-753-3436. I like to think that PBS is concerned with our soul. If your soul is in the right place, you're giving back. field at the 35 yard line seven to three hounds have the lead it's a high end over in kicks going to be a little bit shorter this time caught at the 10 yard line by Mario. he's to the 25 30 and wrapped up at the 37 yard line so great field position and that goes back to my key to the to a to a win is a special teams yeah we both talked about that when you want to flip that football field you got the wind at your back get that ball into the end zone put them on the 25 yard line don't let them extend the field 
Kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. Second possession for the Greyhounds. They lead it by a score of 7-3. to three. Edwards out of the gun. Two to the near side, one to the far side. Back to pass Edwards. Quick hitter to the far side, and that's dropped. It was caught by Robinson and just right out of his hands. He was wide open for a gain of about five. You know, this is one thing that's disturbed me all season is how far off the Mules defensive back play on receivers. I want to see him playing up more, a little tighter on them. And if, if they don't have the speed to stay up with them, of course, they're going to have to play a little bit deeper. But, man, we got we can't give up those little five-yard dink routes. Second down and ten for the Hounds. Two to the near side, one to the far side. Edwards back to pass. Fires it across the middle. Caught at the 47. A tackle is broken. And into Mule territory at the 47-yard line. And then we can't miss tackles. They have to wrap up. Andre Gilbert running up there that time, trying to make a big hit, but he dropped his head, didn't see where the receiver was, and he misses the tackle. So now it's first down and 10 for the Greyhounds. Greyhounds already have five first downs in this game. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his right. Give it to McKellar. He runs to the far side to the 45 and just drives right over a defender for the Mules. That was Caleb Hinches that made the contact and then got driven back about four yards. That's what I was talking about. He's 5'9", 215. You know he's going to be a load to bring down. He's a aggressive, hard running back. We've already seen that today. It means you're going to have to go low and get him to the ground. Second down and one. That's a pick up a nine on first down. Mules don't have enough guys on. Now they're going to switch a couple of guys out changing personnel. Edwards has it, hands it off McKellar up the middle. He's going to bounce it to the outside and gets it to the Mule 32-yard line. Keyshawn Howe did a nice job staying home, spies out the running back, and then dries in his legs. Like I said, wrap up those legs, tie him up, bring him down. He gets the first down, but it wasn't a big game. Mules have been known for making great defensive adjustments, and looks like that's going to have to be the case here again this afternoon. 7.57 to go in the first quarter, 7-3 to three Hounds, and they are on the move. They're at the Mule 32-yard line. Edwards out of the gun. Man to his right. Back to pass. Edwards, he's in trouble. Hit as he throws and just throws this one away. Good pressure that time by the Mules. There, I think we're going to start seeing the Mules have to bring more pressure, but that's going to leave them a little bit empty on the backside. Well, when you're already down, Dylan Price is your strong safety. That's a little risky because you, you've got good players. Caleb Hinch is a good player. Keyshawn Howell, a good player. But they're not Dylan Price or they'd be starting over him. So you've got substitutions playing there in the back end. It's going to put a lot more pressure on them, but it looks like you're going to have to bring some some uh, blitzes, some twists, some things like that up front, try and get some pressure on quarterback. Second down and 10 at the 32-yard line of the Mules. Winner of this game will head to Big Rapids, Michigan, to take on Ferris State. Edwards has it. Pitch left to the 30 and a couple of tackles broken up to down to the 28 yard line. That'll be a gain of four. But we've got a flag down, our first flag of the game. And Franklin Hunt's over there clapping his hands. I think they're gonna he's saying that they got he got held and they right on top of that one. Yeah, so that's gonna go against the Hounds. They average 55 penalties per game. So Daniel Soxie, that was a good break for the Mules there. Yes, the Hounds have been running gun against the Mules, and it's good to have them move back midfield to get a good stop and momentum shift for the UCM defense. Yeah, it really is a good momentum shift. It's going to be second down now and forever. Second down and 20 at the Mule 42-yard line. See if the Mules dial up some pressure here. They're going to show pressure from the edge. Edwards out of the gun, two to the far side, one to the near side. Back to pass Edwards. He has protection. He's going to throw it deep, and that's going to be way overthrown and incomplete. And then a shove in the back by Medio. And we got a flag at the 18-yard line. I was surprised I didn't see it sooner. Andre Gilbert had his jersey all the way untucked in hell. I mean, he's going to get called for holding. I think Medio was upset about that. But there's no call for that shove in the back right there, right in front of the back judge. Yeah, there's no call for that. That should have been a flag. And if this is against the Mules, it should be offsetting. Yeah, that's un- un- undoubtedly. 
Yeah, he had him held. There was no question about that. That jersey was pulled way out, but that shove at the end, that's right in front of the ref. That's a third time the Mules have let a wide receiver get behind them. So that's the Greyhounds are in good shape. First and 10 at the Mule 32. 7-3 Hounds, 7-11 to go here in the first quarter. Two to the near side, two to the far side. They're going to give it to McKellar up the middle, and he'll bounce it through tackles, breaking more tackles, and then takes it inside the 10-yard line. That was not a good effort by the Mules at all. Well, I'm looking at this UND team, and they're a blue-collar team. They're just going to pound you with it. They're going to stop you on the run. They're going to get receivers who are going to be aggressive and shove you in the back, whether you're right in front of an official or not. They're going to be blue-collar and come out here and just try and punch you in the mouth and wear you down. Yeah, that was probably four missed tackles. McKellar was wrapped up a couple of times. The Mules just couldn't couldn't bring him down. Edwards out of the gun. He's got McKellar to his left, two to the near side, two to the far side. Back to pass. Edwards looking all kinds of time. All kinds of time. Now he's going to roll to his right. He's going to keep it to the five and wrapped up at the one-yard line. Boy, he had all day there. The Mules' defense right now is really having a hard time. Well, you got guys tapping their helmets trying to get off the field, too. They are gassed. They have been pounded. They have been running all over the place. I, You know, this Indianapolis team, to me, looks like a team that feels disrespected. They, they think, okay, everybody thinks GLVC, we're not a very good conference. We're going to come in here and we're, show we're made of. They're thinking, we should be the four seed. We should be the ones hosting this game. All right, we're going to prove it to you. Mules are going to need to step it up and demonstrate where, they're, where they should be. Double tight end in motion to the far side. McKellar to the left to Edwards. Edwards out of the gun. Edwards gives it to McKellar, and he'll be wrapped up and brought down back at the five-yard line. That's a good push by that Mules defensive line. Tommy Carter did a great job again in pursuit that time and getting a grip on the running back and staying low on him, holding on for dear life until help arrives, and they were able to get a nice loss there. Mules Mules offense really did a nice job the first time they had it, but at this pace, the Mules are going to have a hard time getting the football very very many times. That's for darn sure. So now it's third down and four. Third down and goal from the four. Big play for the Mule defense. Trips to the far side. Edwards back to pass. Looking left. Now he's in trouble. Now he's flushed. Now he runs it up the middle. The Mules trip him up. He keeps his feet. He's elusive. Throws as he's hit, and that's going to be incomplete. That was a dangerous throw. Good job by the defense, really stiffening up. And now we get some extracurricular. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not going to be a bit surprised if we see some fisticuffs in this one. Team uh, Indianapolis trying to, again, exert its will and improve that they belong here. UCM defending its home turf. This is going to be a, uh, a bloodbath, i got a feeling. Boozman on for a 21-yard attempt from the near hash. He is 10 of 13 in field goals with a long of 42. Puts the foot in that, and that is good. And the Hounds jump on top now by a score of 10 to 3 with 448 to go in the first quarter. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. A degree in digital media production with an emphasis in digital journalism will develop your skill set for work in multimedia outlets, including print, online, and broadcast. Our faculty members bring real-world experience to the classroom, and students can showcase their work online at digitalberg.com and in the student-led newspaper, The Mule Skinner. For more information on this or other concentrations within the digital media production program, please visit ucmo.edu forward slash DMP. What if news wasn't just a commodity, but a commitment? The fiscal cliff is a fiscal suicide. Why shouldn't we explore every side of the story? The Syrian army has pulled back. Where can you turn for news you can trust? How do we make sense of something like this? On PBS, we believe journalism should never stop asking questions. Give to your PBS station and support independent journalism. We answer to no one but you. The defense, we need to see him do a lot less bending and breaking today. That ball's going to 
go out of the back of the end zone, and Mules will have it first down and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. Well, let's see what the Mules offense can do. They've only run five plays compared to 16 for the Greyhounds. Kobe Wilkerson out there now for the Mules. Shea Wyatt to the far side. Bowles out of the gun. Bowles has it, wants to throw. Goes far side, caught at the 30, and then wrapped up there is Shea Wyatt. So that's a gain of five on first down. The thing I've loved watching about the Mules receivers all season long is the job they do of catching the football out away from their body. I say it almost every game, but they do such a good job there. That's why they're able to get so many yards after the catch. I think the Mules are going to have success throwing it deep today. Bowles out of the gun. Two to the near side, two to the far side. Davidson comes in motion. He is in the slot. Here's a quick end around, and, well, that's going to go nowhere. That's a loss of five. That'll bring up third down and ten. They tried to go end around to Kobe Wilkerson, and, and that was blown up by that NDD. And Jacob Schmatz did a nice job of reading that one and making the tackle, and that's what I was saying about this defense. They are a fast defense. This team looks like a team built for speed. I mean, with a name like Greyhounds, you'd kind of expect that sort of thing. But they are really going to do a good job of pursuing to the outside. Big play here for the Mules, third down and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Ground showing pressure. Here's a delayed blitz. Bowles fires to the far side, and that'll be incomplete. And the Mules are going to have to punt it away. The Mules needed to get something on the board that time. That is not a good drive for, for UCM. You talked about, too, that you think they can, they're going to have some success throwing the ball deep. UND is two, has allowed 251 yards passing this season. That's one of the reasons teams don't rush or don't have the rushing yards because they can throw on them. Davion Bell back deep for the Greyhounds. Davidson stands at his 10. Davidson has it, puts the right foot in it. Nice high spiraling punt that's going to be caught at the 25-yard line. The running backwards is Bell. Now he has room up the middle, and he'll be brought down at the 39-yard line. That was very, very dangerous. And that's so infuriating. You had four guys with one blocker and one return man back there, and you miss a tackle, and the other two guys blow right by him. You have got to break down and stay in your lanes. That's exactly what we were talking about on special teams. You get a huge punt. You got the guy hemmed in, and you let him squirt through you. First down and 10 for the Greyhounds. Hill's defense needs to... Step it up here and try to get the ball back for that mule offense. 3.27 to go here in the first quarter. Edwards has it. Quick hitter. Caught far side. A couple of stiff arms and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That'll be a gain of six on first down. That was Maurice Robinson, 6'4", 203, going against Franklin Hunt, 5'10", 180, and Robinson's going to win that battle. He's second team all GLDC, 35 catches, 496 yards this year. Again, they, they got are big on the outside, little up the middle, but they're going to use those big outside guys and try and beat up on your, receiver, on your defensive backs. Three minutes to go in the first quarter, 10-3. Mules trail it by a touchdown. Edwards has it, fakes the pitch to the far side, wants to go deep. Again, they get behind the Mule defense, and that is going to be overthrown, or that was going to be another touchdown. So the Mule cornerbacks right now having a real hard time keeping the Greyhounds in front of them. Not even close. And they're not getting any help over the top either because the safety came busted in underneath that route as well. He's got to read it, get caught looking into the backfield, watches that toss fake. And so then he lets the receiver run right by him, and then he's playing catch up as well. It's okay for a cornerback to let a guy over the top so you can undercut the route, but you've got to have safety help over the top of him. Third down and four for the Greyhounds. They check the sideline to change the play. A couple of men in motion to the near side, five on the play clock, now with three, and the Greyhounds are going to burn a timeout. Ten to three. Greyhounds have the lead, 248 to go in the first quarter. Third down and four. At the Greyhound 45. Time out on the field. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. 
we cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. We are mules. Over the past 150 years, nothing has gotten in the way of our success. Not wars, not a fire that burned down our campus, and certainly not a virus. In 1918, the Spanish flu also forced us to close our doors, but we didn't call it quits then, and we're not stopping now. Together, we will come back stronger to graduate with meaningful degrees and make a difference. We are the University of Central Missouri, and we are mule strong abuse in Johnson County. Good luck and go get a mules. Big brothers, big sisters of Johnson County. 608 North College Street in Warrensburg. Big play here. Third down and four. Greyhounds have it at their own 45-yard line. Mules trying to get a stop. Edwards out of the gun. Two to the near side. Tied in in the slot. McKellar to the left of Edwards. Mills showing pressure from the edge. Handoff up the middle. And that's going to be close to a first down. Driven back. And, boy, that's going to be right at the line. They're coming in at the 48 and a half, and they needed to get to the 49. They'll be going for it. They're at fifth in the nation in fourth down conversions. When you got a running back like Al McKellar, if you don't go for it here, you don't deserve to be here. We'll see what they do. They're going to run the punting unit on. Play it safe. They have a lot of faith in that defense. So it's fourth down, and the Greyhounds are going to kick it away. Here's Boozman. It's one of those deals where you think you probably are going to get it, but you change your mind. Yeah, they're going to they're going to pr- play for the fake. Now Kobe's going to st- they have the enough guys. Yeah, they got eleven. It's going to be a punt. Boozman puts the foot in it. Kobe runs back, catches it at the fifteen. Cuts up to the 20, and that's where the Mules will have it first down and 10. So we're seeing a lot of confusion out there on special teams right now. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, that's the concern right now is because, again, in a game like this, special teams can be so critical for you. I was going to say great job by Kobe of fielding that punt because they punted it over here in the corner. If he lets that ball go, it's going to bounce down inside the five. So he does a good job of fielding it. But there's all kinds of confusion just getting on the field. Bowles will be out of the gun. He's got Turner behind him. Two to the far side, one to the near side. Mules could really use a touchdown here, get this thing knotted up at 10. They're going to give it to Turner up the middle, and he'll battle forward for just a yard. That'll bring up second down and nine. We know it's hard to run against this Indy defense. Well, the Mules offensive line, 292 pounds, going against a 265-pound defensive line. They have got to reestablish where that line of scrimmage is. Get a push up the field and give your running back some room to maneuver. Bowles out of the gun. Turner to his right. Two to the far side, one to the near side. Bowles back to pass, has time. Hit as he throws. It's a wobbler, and Shea Wyatt comes back for it. He's at the 45-40. Angles and spin down at the 39. That is Shea Wyatt getting it done. That is prime time Shea Wyatt right there. That ball was a duck. Brooke got drilled just as he was throwing that football. Couldn't step into it. Shea bailed him out. He comes back. That's a big-time catch by the the sophomore wide receiver. So now it's first down and 10 for the Mules. Bowles out of the gun. Turner to his left, two to the near side, one to the far side. Now they're going to bring a man in motion. They'll give it to Turner up the middle. He's got a little seam, bounces it to the 33-yard line. That is a beautiful run of seven yards on first down, Daniel Soxie. Even if it's third and one or you run it for one yard, you can never quit on that run game. Got to always run the football or always attempt to run the football. Washita leads Lindenwood by a score of 14 to 10 in the first quarter. Northwest leads Henderson or uh, Harding 7 to nothing. Here's Turner up the middle, battles to the 30, and that's close to a first down, but it's going to be, now they're going to mark him down at the 31, so now it's third down and two. Alex Parsons, the all-GLVC linebacker, senior 6'2", 211, he makes the tackle. The first quarter is going to come to a conclusion, 10-3. 
The Hounds have the lead over the Mules. Stay tuned. Second quarter action coming your way next on the UCM Sports Radio Network. A degree in digital media production with an emphasis in audio will enhance your skill set for work in radio, television, film, and beyond. Our faculty members bring real-world experience to the classroom, and students can showcase their work on UCM Radio The Beat, as well as in film projects and live events. For more information on this or other concentrations within the Digital Media Production Program, please visit ucmo.edu forward slash DMP. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can, and then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? Ten three, 3 Mules down 7. Third down and 2 for the Mules at the 31-yard line of the Greyhounds. Big play right here. Bowles out of the gun. He's got Turner to his right. One to the near side, one to the far side. Bowles has it. He's going to give it to Turner, and he fires down to the 30-yard line. That's going to be short. That is short by about a yard. So now it's fourth down and a yard. What are you going to do here, Joe? Uh, you're going to have to pound that one right up the middle again. You've got to go for it, obviously. You're going to have to impose your will on this team. And they cannot get to the outside. This speed on this Greyhounds defense is too fast. You're going to have to get it up the middle, and that means your offensive line has got to fire off the football, get low, and drive. Got to go one yard. Bowls out of the gun. Tight formation near hash. Big play. Look to the sideline to change the play. Greyhounds have everybody in the box. Going to give it to Turner. He's going to get to the outside. He gets a nice block to the 25-20, to the 15. Two hands on the ball and out of bounds at the 11. Great job blocking on the right side by that Mule's offensive line. Well, that ball was supposed to go up the middle, but Devontae Turner, great vision. He bounces it to the outside. When you've got everybody up in the box like that, if you can get to the corner, you've got some room to run, and that's what he was able to do. I'm not sure I've ever seen a defense that had everybody in the box, all 11 guys. Good job by Devontae Turner to bounce that one outside. First down and... 10 for the Mules at their own 11-yard line. Mules down by 7. Bowles has it. Back to pass. Lobs one down the middle to Slager. That's holding, by the way. How are you not going to get the hold right there? He had a hold of his back arm. He can only get one arm extended. This is the same official who did not call the shove when Matteo shoved um, Andre Gilbert in the back. He's looking right at it the whole way and doesn't throw the flag. You have got to be kidding me. That's poor officiating by our back judge. I mean, very poor. He knows he's got to work here. He just can't stand around back there and do nothing. Second down and 10. Ball at the 11. Brutal no call. Here's Bowles out of the gun. Here's pressure by the Greyhounds, and Turner gets it up the middle to the 10, and he's brought down at the 9. So just a gain of a couple on that. Greyhound defense, man, they are tough. Well, that was lucky to get anything out of that because the snap was high. The handoff exchange was not clean. Devontae got what he could out of that one. Third down and eight for the Mules. Trail it by a score of 10 to 3. Big play here. Bowls out of the gun. 
You do not want to settle for field goals. Bowles back to pass. Slant pattern dropped. Slager had it for a touchdown, and he dropped it. Back shoulder just a little bit, but you got both hands on the football. You've made those catches all year. This is where you really have to come down with the with the ball. Here comes the field goal unit again, and you talked about it in pregame. You don't want to be settling for field goals when you should be scoring touchdowns, and the Mules normally score touchdowns. Well, ask Fort Hayes what happens when you're trading for touchdowns for field goals. This will be a... 26-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So the Mules tack on three more, and they trail it by four, 10 to 6. 12.59 to go in the first half. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you? What if television could remember the heroes we honored? The music we danced to, the dreams we chased. And the dream shall never die. No one tells our nation's story like PBS. Give to your PBS station and help bring America's story to life. By a score of 10 to 6 with 12.59 to go in the first half. One thing I've liked seeing so far, Greg, is the Mules are not shying away from that run game. They are going to run the football. They are going to establish that we are going to play both both games, run and pass, so that for Indianapolis cannot just sit back on the pass. They're going to force them to come up and play the run, which will help open up the pass game later on. Matty Owen Clinton back deep for the Greyhounds. Diddle will kick it off, puts the right foot in it. High pooch kick, short kick. Fair catch called for at the 37-yard line. And that's where the grounds are going to have it. First down and 10. Kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today, warrensburgcollision.com. So why the pooch kick there? What You're going straight down. If you look at the flags, you're going into a stiff wind now. It looks like it's picked up a little bit. I'm still not sure I'd go with the pooch kick, but when you look at those two return men, if you want to go deep, you're probably not going to get it very deep on the kick, and you're giving them a chance to return it even more. So the Greyhounds have it first and 10. Great field position, their own 37-yard line. McKellar to the left of Edwards, three to the far side, one to the near side. Edwards has it. He is going to keep it. He'll run it up the middle, gets to the 40, to the 42-yard line, or 41-yard line. That'll be a gain of four, brings up second down and six. You know, one thing that this offensive line does for Indianapolis is they do a lot of movement. You had three guys going to your right, the two t- to tackle and the guard on the far side. They pull and come and lead on the back side. That makes it really difficult on a defensive line to pick out, okay, now where am I going to be getting blocked? Where do I step into the gap? Second down and six from the Hound 41-yard line. Edwards out of the gun. He's going to hand it off McKellar, and he'll be met immediately and still battles for a couple of yards. He was met at the line of scrimmage and still drove those legs forward to pick up a couple of yards. Well, Kingsley Ianni had him right at the line of scrimmage and just let him go before anybody else could get there. So this man is going to have to wrap up and hold on, and the rest of the defense is going to have to swarm and finish it off. Third down for the Greyhounds. Ball on the 44-yard line of the Greyhounds, who are 0 of 3 on third downs in this game. McKellar to the right of Edwards. Mules are showing pressure. Back to pass, Edwards. Fires one again deep, again behind the defense. The wide receiver, Matteo, but it's going to be incomplete. They are behind the receiver cornerbacks every single time. Yeah, I've been trying to focus on what's happening at the line of scrimmage. I'm going to start looking at the receivers. Are they making double moves, or what are they doing? Because Josh Terry has speed. I was talking to Coach Boda. He said he's probably the fastest guy on the team, and he was beat by a good four or five steps. So now Boozman on to punt. Mules are fortunate they have not been able to connect on the, the big pass play, and back deep is Kobe Wilkerson. He's at his 10. 
It's a good snap. It's a high spiraling punt. Fair catch called for at the 14-yard line, and that's where the Mules will have it. First down and 10 with 11.30 to go here in the first half. Mules defense has done a good job of shoring up some of those issues that have uh, that plagued them on the first couple of drives. But if they don't shore up that other one where they're getting beat deep, we're going to have some problems here later on in this football <laughs> yes, we game. Will. They've just been lucky on a couple of those that the ball's been overthrown. They've done a better job of coming up and stopping the run and not allowing those big 10, 12 rushes. But now you got to cover over the top. Bowles will be out of the gun. He's got Kobe to his right. Shea Wyatt to the near side, two to the far side. Now they shift Davidson to the near side as well. And Kobe out of the backfield. Quick swing pass to Kobe. Caught at the 20. Little stiff arm up to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of 13 and a first down for the Mules. I think, you know, one thing we've discovered really quickly, Greg, is we talked before the game. It's so hard to tell. GLVC, yeah, you've got four teams that moved into that league that couldn't compete in the MIAA. How good is that league that this team is really that good? I think we've discovered they're legit. They are legit. Oh, this is a legit team. Bowles out of the gun. Back to pass. Play action. Little screen pass caught by Kobe with one hand and... Really nowhere to go, and that'll bring up second down and 10. He didn't get too far, get far enough away from the line of scrimmage on that screen pass. He's right there on the outside of the far defensive end. So he makes the catch, but he's standing right next to a white jersey. you got to get farther away. Second down and 10 for the Mules. 10.40 to go in the first half. They trail it by four. Mules have a chance to jump on top with a touchdown. Handoff inside. That's going to be Kobe to the 30 and pounds his way up to the 33-yard line, and that'll bring up third down and manageable, third down and three. And, again, I like the fact that the Mules are still trying to run the football, that they come into this game saying, okay, yeah, you're only giving up 58 yards rushing a game. We're still going to run the football, and they've had some success when they've done that. They have. They're trying to really soften up that defense, and that'll pay dividends in the second half if they can continue to do it. But you still have to be able to convert, and you got to put points on the board. And your defense has to get over the top. Bowles out of the gun. Kobe to his left. Tight formation for the Mules. Back to pass. Bowles swings it out. Going to be caught. Rolls. He's at the 35. Shoulder down to the 37-yard line. That's a first down. They move the chains. And Daniel Soxie, he's been one of your keys to a Mule victory for quite a while at the backup tight end spot. Yes, I am very pleased to see that play. Rules has been such a key player. Even though it's one or two catches a game, it's always very critical when a, he makes that catch. And when you're a smaller defense and your guy you're trying to tackle 6'5", 250, it makes it a little bit tougher. So Bowles out of the gun. Davidson in the slot. Back to pass. Brooke Bowles looking. Wants to go deep. He's got Davidson at the 30 over his shoulder catch. And That'll be incomplete, just a little bit too far over that outside shoulder. Yeah, he didn't even need to go outside shoulder because Davidson had his man beat. Throw it inside a little bit more, and you've got the catch, but Davidson had to drift too far to the sideline. 10-6, Hounds have the lead. 9-16 to go in the first half. Second down and 10 for the Mules at their own 38-yard line. Shea Wyatt and Drew Slager to the far side. Now they're going to put Rolls in motion. He is in the slot. Play action. Flag on the play. It's going to be caught by Flournoy at the 48 to down to the 40-yard line. We have to wait and see what that flag's all about. Where that flag is, it's probably going to be a that hold. That was a quick flag. Both of It's on both sides. That might be defensive offsides. That was a great catch by Flournoy. He had to go up and get that off his back shoulder. That's on the mules. Well, there's two flags. Maybe it's the same. Didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. So we're going to take it back five and take that play off the board. That's not the kind of penalty you expect to see in week 12 of the season in the first round of the playoffs. That's a mental error right there. It is. Coach Boda talking about maybe somebody was supposed to be on the line and they weren't. That's why you see those receivers when they come out. They always point out the ref to check. Am I on the line? If the ref will tell them. And Flournoy is really trying to get his attention over here. Am I on or am I off? Bowls out of the gun. Bowles back to pass, fakes the swing. He's going to run it. He's to the 35, 40, 45, and down to the 46-yard line. That is a beautiful run. That's going to pick up 15 of those yards and bring up third down and short yet again, third down and three. Got a great block downfield by freshman Dan Sunderman, third-team All-MIAA as a true freshman. 
did a great job of getting up the field, and he's able to play off of his block and get positive yardage. So Bowles out of the gun. Big third down play. Mules are one of five on third down. Hands it off up the middle across midfield to the 45, to the 40, and down to the 37-yard line. Kobe Wilkerson right up the middle between the tackles and moves the chains. Kiabe Guerrier, he was the one that had to run into Kobe when Kobe had a full set of steam. Nice greeting right there. Great run. Mules have now rushed it for 80 yards. And a quick hitter. It's going to be caught at the 40-yard line and down to the 35-yard line. Mules go quick. I was checking my stats, and they already had it out to Drew Slager. Transfer out of Truman, and he picks up four, brings up second down and six. Boy, if Slager could have kept his feet under him, he could have been running a long time. Just got a little shoestring tackle. Here's Bowles. He's going to give it to Kobe. He hits the brakes and then goes forward, and he'll pick up just a couple of yards. Now you're looking at third down, a little bit longer, third down and four. You know, Kobe does a good job of keeping his weight forward, keeping his feet moving. Even when he's stopping, he's still got a body lean. Bowles checks the sideline. He's got Kobe to his left. Bowles back to pass, looking. Now he's flushed. He wants to go deep. Oh, that's a tackle. And there's a flag, another tackle. We got tackles everywhere out there. How come the far official didn't throw the flag at the two when that wide receiver was tackled? I wonder if he's saying that Shea Wyatt was tripping and falling. Where was the ball thrown? It looked like it was thrown to the outside. They throw the flag here in the middle. At least our back judge has a flag. I thought he forgot it for a minute. Unless they were saying Shea was tripping and falling and the defender was falling with him on that far side, there could have been something there. There's very definitely a hold here in the middle of the field. No doubt. So what? What? Did we catch that in the end zone? Did they say it bounced off to the defender and he caught it? I got to see a replay on this. Oh, my gosh, yes. The defender <laughs> turned and I faced him and jumped all over him. Zach Davidson reached back with one reaches back with one arm makes the catch. Great job by our student crew from the UCM Media Network Central Television. Super job, guys, of getting that replay. I thought the ball was thrown to the corner. PAT is up. The PAT is good. I thought it went to the far <laughs> corner to the far sideline. So did I. Because we're watching the tackle it. going on there. He's wow. making the throw into the middle of the field. If we could see that replay again, that was unbelievable. Because the defender is all over Zach Davidson. Zach is falling. He reaches Here's out with the a right arm. Can you see that? So he got Bowles stepped up to the pocket very nicely, threw it down the middle. And, yeah, Zach Davidson able to haul that one in after he was being held and then put the ball over the goal line. And then it bounced out. But I thought he was going to Shea White over in the corner. And Shea White was being held. And he was being drugged down at the same time. But... As it is, the Mules lead at 13-10, to 10, and we just missed the best touchdown of the game. I don't know who had the better effort Boy, there, Zach good. Davidson or the camera crew, but you're great job, students, for doing for getting that shot. Zach Davidson, awesome job of maintaining body control, focus, reaching out that one arm and making that catch. Yeah, that was absolutely phenomenal. Danielle Soxie, that was big-time play by Zach Davidson. I'm not sure what game you guys were watching, I no but idea. I saw it saw everything happen. Zach Davidson was fighting his defender and basically pushing off of him to grab the football and go into the end zone. Yeah, I, I never saw it. I, I didn't see it. I thought it was going to the corner. Diddle, another high pooch kick. Fair catch called for at the 34-yard line. So the Greyhounds will have good field position yet again. Kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision. The official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. Well, we got Danielle Soxie on the sideline asking what game we're watching. We met, she saw the whole thing. My son, Grant Moore, our spotter up here, he's looking at me going, I saw it. Where were you looking at? a buddy of mine in Oklahoma just texted me. He goes, what are you guys watching up there? <laughs> it's not the fourth quarter yet. You shouldn't be having anything other than water to drink up there. There's Edwards out of the gun. I can see that. He's got Clinton to his right, two to the far side, one to the near side. Here's the handoff to Clinton up the middle, and he's going to be hit in the backfield, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, keeps his balance, and then he goes down at the 32-yard line. That'll be a loss of a couple. Ubong Udom had his back to the running back, had his back to McKellar, and reaches out with his back arm trying to make the tackle. Can't bring him down. 
So he bounces off of him, but Jacob Wiggins finishes it off in the backfield. That was a great effort by that defensive line that time. 13-10, to 10, the Olds lead it, 6.41 to go here in the first half. Empty backfield for Edwards. Two to the near side, two to the far side. Sarabia in the slot to tie it in. The Eels are going to bring pressure. Edwards back to pass. Hit as he throws again down the middle, and that's going to be pass interference on the Mules. Yeah, that is. And he had the, the that time the, the coverage was there. He didn't have to reach across and get him. Just never looks back for the football. That's going to be on Caleb Hinches, who had his hand right across the front of the jersey with a little bit of tug. Uh, you can hear the boo birds coming out. They didn't like the call, but that absolutely was pass interference. He had his bo- his arm across the receiver. Which is fine as long as that back judge calls that every time. Exactly. Exactly. If he call if he will call that every time, that's good. So that's a fifteen yard penalty and a first down for the Greyhounds. Yeah, the mules are gonna have to get something figured out on the back end. Got great pressure up the middle. Big hit on T.J. Edwards, but then the safety doesn't get his head around, and we get the pass interference call. So first down and 10 for the Hounds at their own 47-yard line. Don't want to give this team extra chances. Edwards out of the gun. They're explosive. Two to the near side, one to the far side. Putting a man in motion. That's going to be McKellar. Swing it out to him. It's to the 45 across midfield and out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That brings up second down and short, second down and a couple. This Al McKellar is legit. He has good speed. He's strong. He runs tough. He reminds me of a little squattier Colby Wilkerson, the way he runs the football. So second down and two from the Mule 45-yard line. Mules had made some nice adjustments on defense, but then the pass interference call, you know, 15 yards, that's really hard to overcome. Due to NCAA rules, we will have no coach halftime interview Edwards out of the gun Clinton to his left back to pass quick hitter it's going to be caught at the 41 a tackle broken and out of bounds at the 37 yard line boy the mules having a hard time wrapping up on that first play well the greyhounds they do not stop on contact once they they catch the football or when they're running the football they don't stop they keep driving the legs and pounding we have a mule down Gilbert, I think, was the initial defender with the contact, and then tackle was broken, but there's a mule down. I cannot tell who it is at the 44-yard line. 13-10, to 10, Mules have the lead over the Greyhounds. 5.34 to go here in the first half, but the Greyhounds are on the move. Let's get you some other scores from Super Region 3. 7 to nothing. Northwest leads Harding. 24 seconds to go in the first half there. 21-17, Wachita. They lead Lindenwood with six minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half. Cootstown leads Tiffin, 31-33. That's late. Notre Dame of Ohio beat Westchester. In the second quarter, Bowie State, they leave Carson Newman by a score of 9-7. to Here it's 13-10 Mules with 5.30 to go in the first half. That was outside linebacker Isaiah Bello that was down on the sideline. They got him up, getting him some water right now. Edwards out of the gun, first down and 10. Clinton to his left. They're going to give it to him. He's going to turn it up, and he'll be met immediately for a loss of a yard. Good job of the Mules really making some adjusted adjustments and getting in there and stopping the run. Devin Smith did a great job of playing off the block onto the outside and being able to get off there and make the tackle in the backfield. Honorable mention all MIAA with 29 total tackles coming into this game. Did a super job of extending his arms, holding off the blocker, shedding him just as the back got to him. Second down and 11. Matteo to the near side. Got to watch out for him. Devion Bell to the far side. Split out there with Maurice Robinson. McKellar to the left of Edwards. Mules are going to show pressure. Edwards back to pass. Quick hitter. Left side caught Matteo. And he'll be wrapped up at the 32-yard line. It's a gain of five on second down. So that brings up third down. 
They've been really working on Andre Gilbert over here with Mario. They haven't even gone to Davion Bell. He's their deep threat. 35 receptions, 599 yards, and six touchdowns. First team all GLBC. They haven't even thrown his way yet. Mario has been open all day. Now the Mules are going to switch on defense. Big third down play. Edwards back to pass, looking to his right. Now he wants to fire one deep down the middle, and that is incomplete. I thought that was caught for the touchdown. Incomplete. It must have came out late. Well, just as I was saying that about going to Bell, they went to Bell that time, and he and Topper were both running post patterns from opposite sides of the field. And I was watching the receivers that time. Nothing fancy. They're just running straight up the field and running on a post and getting behind the Mules' defense. They ran into each other. I think Bell knocked the ball away from Topper. You got the replay right in front of you, and it looks like the Greyhounds are going to probably call a timeout here. I don't know if they... They're not sure what they want to do on fourth down and five from their own 32. It was actually Keyshawn Howell who knocked the ball loose whenever Topper actually was one coming down with the football. But he had to contend with Bell coming from the other side, and Howell here, broke it up. Here we go, fourth down. Edwards back to pass. Looking left, wants to go deep. He's got a man and overshoots him on fourth down, and the Mules will get it back on a turnover on downs. Back deep for the Mules that time. Couldn't tell who that was. It might have been Joshua Terry. I think it was Cody Bell, actually, was on the coverage. I'm watching him come on the sideline trying to see the number. Yeah, that was Cody Bell. He was able to get an arm across the chest, but he was he never made contact, and he's looking back, able to break that pass up. Here come the Mules on offense now. First down and 10 from their own 32-yard line. Turner to the left of Bowles. Bowles will give it to Turner, and he'll be met at the line of scrimmage for no gain at all, and that'll bring up second down to 10. Boy, he had a gap back to his left if he could have just planted that right foot and cut back a little bit more. So second down and 10. Mules lead at 13 to 10, 334. I'd like to see a nice little drive here and put a few more points on the board. Alex Parsons again with another tackle that time for the Greyhounds. Mules have made some great defensive adjustments like they we see every game. Bowles out of the gun. Turner to his left. Bowles has it. Play action. Back to pass. Fires across the middle. Cut at the 45 by Davidson. Makes a greyhound miss. Now reverses field. Tries to get to the corner. A stiff arm and up to the 48-yard line. And another first down for the Mules. Zach Davidson finally across the middle. And, Joe, I kind of thought it. The Mules have really been working the sideline, and it was time to start working the middle of that field a little bit. Yeah, he did a great job of coming back for that football. I was a little concerned because he lost about five yards trying to get to an opening. He gained it back because of his speed. But, yeah, that that middle is open for a big guy like him. Two to the near side. Davidson in the slot. They're going to shift him to the left. Bowles back to pass. Has time. Fires one. It's going to be caught at the 42 and a spin move down to the 38-yard line. That's Marsalis. And that's a pickup of 13 and another first down. There again, a receiver coming back to the football. You get there first. If you wait on it, you give that defense more time to come in and break up the pass. He comes back, catches it out away from his body, tucks it, and gets up the field. And he's going to keep his legs dry but not going to give up on the play. Time not a factor here. Mules have three timeouts. Twee House will be to the far side with Zach Davidson. Trips to the near side. Empty backfield for Bowles at the near hash. Now Turner shifts to the right of Bowles. Now they put Marsalis in motion to the far side. Bowles back to pass. He has time. Steps up into the pocket. Sidearm cut. Bouncing off a chest to the 25-yard line. And that's going to be another first down. That was right into the chest that Cam Saunders came out. He grabbed it again. Good concentration to hold on to that football. Well, again, he runs the corner route to the outside. Breaks it back toward the quarterback. Gets the ball away from his body. It slips through. It comes into his body, but his hands are there to corral it. If you try and catch it against your body, you got nothing there if it bounces off. Bowls back to pass. Minute 42 to go in the half. He's got Davidson in the corner. and Oh, just missed him. He was wide open at the five and just had it too far out towards the boundary of the field, and he was unable to get it. He was there. And if you notice with Zach Davidson, he does not look like he's running that fast. But he well, gobbles up. I mean, I understand. Six, legs seven, but seven feet long. <laughs> But he gobbles up the ground. Doesn't look like he's turning the feet over that quickly, but he runs away from everybody. Winner of this game heads to Big Rapids, Michigan. I think the Mules want to take a timeout. They do. So the Mules will take a timeout with 135 to go in the first half, leading 13 to 10. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. 
A degree in digital media production with an emphasis in digital cinema will prepare you for all aspects of film production such as screenwriting, editing, cinematography, and motion graphics. Our faculty members bring real-world experience to the classroom, and students can showcase their work in film festivals, UCM's CTV, and digitalberg.com. For more information on this or other concentrations within the Digital Media Production Program, please visit ucmo.edu forward slash DMP. What if television could sweep us away to another time and place? Very nice, my lady. And could take us from the Gilded Age to the Great War. From the heat of the chase to the heart of a queen. No one tells stories like PBS. Give to your PBS station and help bring stories like these to life. In the first half, and after a crazy first five to seven minutes of this game, and things have really settled down, uh, the Mules now with 263 yards of offense, 167 for you, Indy. Second and 10 from the Greyhound, 27-yard line. Bowles out of the gun, Turner to his left. Man in the slot is Davidson. They're going to give it to Turner, makes a man miss. He's at the 25, a block to the 20, to the 15, and ripped down at the 14-yard line. That's a gain of 12 and a first down. And Danielle Soxie, we're starting to settle into a pretty good football game now. This is the Mules offense. They have been playing all season long. Got almost everyone out there as first team, so it just goes to show how widespread they are. And the great thing is the Mules will get the ball to start the second half. Here's Bowles. Play action. Back to pass. Looking across the middle. Has a man caught. Shea Wyatt. Touchdown. 14 yards. Back in the end zone. He was well defended. A beautiful pass by Bowles as Shea Wyatt hauls in. Touchdown. Number 12 on the year. Well, the headlinesman just ran out and said something to Shea. I don't know what that was about because he looked back at his own team and was running off the field. He's celebrating with his guy, so again, goes up over the top, makes a great grab. That ball was on a line, too, from Brooke Bowles. Here's Knowlton on for the PAT. It's good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good, and the Mules have outscored the Hounds 20-3. to 103 to go in the first half, 20-10. to 10. Mules lead it over Indianapolis. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. A degree in digital media production with an emphasis in live studio remote will enhance your knowledge in multi-camera studio shows as well as multi-camera live event productions. Our professors bring real-world experience into the classroom and students can showcase their work through different media outlets including live streaming, UCM CTV, and digitalberg.com. For more information on this or other concentrations, please visit ucmo.edu forward slash DMP. Warrensburg Collision, your full, is the premier full-service collision center in Johnson County. For minor scratches and dents to full collision repair, they do it all. Warrensburg Collision, locally owned and proud to support UCM football. Go Mules. Here's a number for you. Indianapolis giving up 58 yards rushing a game. Mules already have 95. Kick caught at the 11-yard line up to the 15-20. 25 has seemed to the 30. 35-40 and out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today, warrensburgcollision.com. And right there is why you do the pooch kick. And the kicking team was offsides. But I've told you, our special teams has been struggling lately, and we're really seeing that here. And that was going to be, and for both of us, that was a key to the game. I mean, you just go up 20-10. to 10, you try and kick it off instead of pooch kicking it. You don't have anybody down there to cover because you kick it on a line drive and you're offside, and now they have the ball on, on your 45-yard line. At the Mule 45-yard line, and that's just frustrating. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his left. 
Swing it out. McKellar catches it, and he's out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Going to have to have somebody spy McKellar coming out of the backfield because they've been trying to run a lot of that screen. John Embry with a great tackle here on the sideline. But you're going to have to have somebody rolling out with, with McKellar when he comes outside. Mills trying to escape a big kick return. Edwards on second down and six at the Mule 41. Back to pass, quick hitter again. It's going to be Cotton and dropped out of bounds. Well, it's like you said before the game, Greg, you know, you, you want, would love a turnover here. They don't turn the ball over very often. They do not. You can't. Can't rely on that. 49 seconds to go in the half. Two timeouts left for the Hounds, so time is not an issue, but down in distance is. Well, crowd getting into this one right now, trying to get They've done a nice job today. Not a huge crowd, but a very vocal crowd here on third and six. Hounds are 0 of 6 on third down, and they're going to take a timeout with 49 seconds to go. Richter Excavating and Plumbing, a full-service excavating and plumbing company providing residential and commercial services. Richter Excavating and Plumbing, locally owned, celebrating 26 years in business. Richter Excavating and Plumbing proudly supports the UCM Mules football team. Call Richter Excavating and Plumbing at 422-8399. Hey, I can attest to that. I had a situation, and, man, they were out there in no time at all, fixed it, didn't cost me a whole lot. I was really, really happy with that. I might have to give them a call. I got a toilet that won't stop running. It's keeping me up at night. Well, either you need to fix that yourself <laughs> or you can give them a call. Halftime in Maryville, 7 to nothing. Northwest has the lead over the Harding Bisons. 21-17 at the half. Washita, they lead Lindenwood. Ferris State, the number one seed. They have the day off today. They haven't played in a while. It's going to be about a three-week spell for the Bulldogs to get fixed, whatever ails them, if anything. Here is third down and six from the Mule 41-yard line. Watch Bell going down the seam. McKellar to the right of Edwards. And that should be a false start. Matteo took off like it was an Olympic track meet. And I think one of the guards might have moved. John Embry was pointing at him. He's pointing back at John Embry. And I'm like, Embry's nowhere near being offside. And that's going to be on Clay Hadley, the junior out of Greenwood, Illinois. So now it's third down and 11. UND 0 of 5 on third down. On the year, they're 50%. 13th in the nation in that category. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his right. Four wide. Back to pass. Edwards in pressure. Now he's going to roll to his right. Throws on the run. Too high. Oh, nearly intercepted. Right through the hands of Matteo. And it's going to be fourth down 11. This should be a punting situation. I've been really impressed with T.J. Edwards. I mean, he th- does a nice job throwing the football, but he's also very elusive. He does a great job of escaping pressure. That time he stiff-armed a defensive lineman and was able to give himself enough time to make the throw. Just threw it a little too high. Mules by 10, 20 to 10, 40 seconds to go in the half. They're going to get the ball back, and they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Boozman stands at his 39-yard line. Boozman has it, puts the right foot in it. Mules almost get a hand on that, and that ball's going to bounce out of the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Devin Smith almost got there. And that ball almost went out of the one. We had a lot of almost. Almost. (laughs) In football, there isn't a lot of almost. But right now, the Mules lead it 20-10, 32 seconds to go. They have one timeout left. It'll be interesting to see what they try to do here. If they want to get into the locker room or... If they want to try to take a shot across the middle of the field, they can still stop the clock, and the clock stops on first downs. Yeah, I could still I could see them trying to take a couple a couple shots deep. If you don't have it, then just take a knee and get into the locker room. Again, no Coach Boda halftime interview due to NCAA requirements here. As Bowles has it, they're going to hand it off, give it to Kobe Wilkerson and I think the Mules are pretty content at 20 to 10. Kiave Garrier, they have some great names on this defense. Kiave Garrier at linebacker, Landry Mabungu at cornerback. 
Mills are going to head to the half leading by a score of 20 to 10. 17 unanswered by the Mules. They lead it over the Greyhounds 20 to 10. Stay tuned. Our halftime show comes your way next on the UCM Sports Radio Network. Well, they've been very efficient throwing the football. Brooke Bowles, 13 of 18, but 70 at 72 percent with a rating of 199.9. That's pretty salty. Yeah, they were really pounding the football early on, really establishing that run game. And then you saw toward the end of the second quarter, then the, that's when they started really trying to air it out. And because they had softened up that defense and brought everybody up trying to stop the run, they were able to hit some, some big passes, and Brooke did a nice job of delivering the football. Critical, like you said, to get some points on the board off of this drive. You've up to 20 to 10. You've scored 17 unanswered. Let's make it 24. Still a little chilly out there, about 46 degrees. Feels like 41 with the breeze. Turner and Wilkerson back deep for the Mules. Boozman will tee it up at the 35 as he awaits for the official from our referee. And here we go. He puts the right foot in it. High end over in kick. Nice leg. Turner at the three-yard line. He's going to bring it to the 10-15. Angles to the 20 and... There's a flag on the play as he is brought down at the 23-yard line. That kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. Good coverage by University of Indianapolis that time. Frank Bentley making the tackle look like we might have something set up with a blocker out front, but that blocker missed his block, and uh, Devante had to adjust, and now we see a flag on the play. Yeah, this is going to be against the Mules. Maybe a hold. I tell you what, if the Mules go on and win this football game, I'm going to have been dead wrong on my key because I said they're going to have to play very solid on special teams, and they, unless they shore some things up here pretty quickly, have not. They definitely have not. Bowls out of the gun, Turner behind him. Tight formation from the near hash. Now they shift Turner to the left. Bowles has it. Play action, back to pass, fires left side, caught at the 20, up to the 21-yard line, spinning out of bounds is Slager, and the Mules pick up a nice chunk of yardage on first down, brings up second down and just two. Calvin Geary here on the tackle, a nice uh, design on that play, you fake the dive, and then zip the ball out really quickly to Slager, Slager gets some positive yardage on it, so you've got a short first, uh, second down. Second down and one for the Mules. Turner to the right of Bowles. Here comes the pressure. Picked up nicely so far. And the give is to Turner, and he'll run right into the blitzing linebacker from the edge. And that brings up third down now and four. Yeah, he usually has really good vision, but he looked back and saw the hole to his right and then tried to bounce it to his left, and he ran it right into the pressure and lost yardage. He had the first down if he cuts it back to his right because there was an opening this way. I'm not sure what he was looking at. So third down and a couple, third down and a long two. Better make it three. Trips to the near side for Bowles. They look to the sideline to change the play. Turner to the right of Bowles. Bowles option right side. Turner, he has a block. He's to the 20 and up to the 24-yard line. Let's see if they give it to him. They stop the clock. And they are. They're going to give it to him. They're going to say he made it. That's a first down for the Mules. Well, Alex Parsons made the stop for the Greyhounds. It looked like he grabbed a hold of Devontae and twisted and rolled with him. He might have rolled him into the first down because he looked like he was stopped short. Yeah, he got it right at the 24 and, I mean, right on the number. So first down and 10 for the Mules. They convert again. They are 4 of 8 on third down. Very good percentage. Pulls out of the gun. Turner to his left. Now they're going to put... Kobe Wilkerson in motion. Play action to him. Bowles hit and driven back. First sack of the game for either team, and he's driven back at the 11-yard line. Alex Parsons came on a delayed blitz and waited for the snap, waited for everybody to engage, and then he picked his hole and shot through the gap between the guard and tackle. Nobody ever saw him coming through. That's a huge loss on on first down. So now it's second down and 19. Ball back at the 14-yard line. Mules have to get all the way to the 34. Bowles back to pass, straight drop. Fires it, hit as he throws, and that'll be incomplete, and that'll bring up third down and 19. So this Indianapolis defense 
getting after the mules here in this opening series of the third quarter. Yeah, they've sh- switched some things up. They're bringing a lot more pressure this time. They're bringing it from different places. They're bringing it on a delay. The mules just have not picked it up on the last two plays. They're asking for a big play here just to get a first down. Four wide for Brooke Bowles. He is back to pass. Dumps a screen. Turner has it to the 20. Spins to the 25, to the 30, and up to the 32. It's going to be short of a first down. He's going to pick up 17 and needed 19. But, you know, even if the Mules punt it, which I expect that they will here, that puts them in a much better position to punt that football. No question about it. Here comes the punting unit. Kept waiting for the punter to come out. I forgot he's already on the field. Yeah. Oh, they're in a short punt situation here. Let's see if they go for it or what they're going to do. Now they're going to back Davidson out of it and get the personal protectors back. I think they're going to see if they can draw him offside. Devion Bell will stand at his 28-yard line. Davidson has it. Puts the row. Oh, not a good punt. Kind of a wobbly punt. Takes a good mule bounce and goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That's actually pretty good because Devion Bell is a tremendous returner. You don't want to kick it to him and watch him wick it down the field. No, I think they were trying to punt it away from him, but he shanked it just a little bit. Fortunately, had people down there to cover it. Great job by Devontae Turner that time to, to the great effort to almost get that first down, but it get, does get the mules out of a hole, and it gives them a chance to punt the ball away. First down and 10 for the Greyhounds at their own 30-yard line. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his right. Tight end in the slot. Give it to McKellar up the middle. He gets it to the 35 and rumbles up to the 39-yard line. 38-yard line, gain of eight, brings up second down and just two. Ubong Udom had to make the tackle in the secondary again for good pursuit, but you don't want your defensive ends making tackles eight yards down the football field. Second down and two at the Hounds' 38-yard line. Edwards has it. Gets it to McKellar, and he'll get it to the 42, and that'll be a first down. You know, they do a lot of that same thing that the Mules do. They'll put a a wide receiver into motion, fake it to him, and then give it to the back. That gets your defensive backs watching to kind of see where that run's coming from, if they need to flow with it to the outside or if it's going to come up the middle. And it can buy it just that little amount of hesitation for your offensive line to engage and uh, punch a hole. First down and 10 for UND. Edwards out of the gun. He's got McKellar to his left. Tied in in the slot, two to the far side. Now they're going to put Bell in motion, pitch to him on the end around. He's at the 40, and he'll be knocked down at the 44-yard line. Boy, he was hit hard that time by Marquez Cooper. He came across from his linebacker spot and drilled Davion Bell. Bell doesn't bring a whole lot to the table, 5'7", 150 pounds, but he can't fly. Pretty good hit that time by the Mules defense. Gain of four. Brings up second down and six. Trips to the far side. McKellar to the right of Edwards. Edwards, the transfer out of Southwest Baptist. Shift him to the left of Edwards. Edwards has it. Gives it to McKellar. And he's going to bounce off a couple of Mules. And they wrapped up for a... Loss of a yard brings up third down and seven. Great pressure from the defensive line to fight through the hole and make the tackle. McKellar didn't like something. He was had he had words for Embry, and Embry just stood there like, what are you talking about? The umpire had to come in and separate and push him back into his side of the football field. So here it is, third down and eight from the Hounds' 43-yard line. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his left. Mule showing pressure. Here they come. Back to pass. Edwards has time. Fires left side. It's going to be caught at the Mule 47-yard line, and that's good for a first down. I was watching that time. Andre Gilbert is playing three yards inside of Davion Bell and about 10 yards off. You're not in much position to do anything there. Bell was way outside, so I don't know why he was set up so far inside of him because all Bell had to do was run a quick out route and he already has separation just by the setup. First down and 10 for the Greyhounds of U Indy. At the Mule 46 yard line, Mules lead it 20 to 10. Edwards out of the gun. Clinton gets it. 
Runs forward to the Mule 43-yard line. That'll be a gain of four. Brings up second down and six. Toriano Clinton was the freshman of the year last year in the GLVC. They have some good skill guys. And they got a lot of them. They're, they're like the Mules in a lot of ways. That They have a lot of players who touch the football a lot. So they distribute it really, really well. And clearly they get a lot of offensive plays. 20 to 10. Mules lead it by 10. Edwards out of the gun. Clinton to his left. Tight end in the slot. Two to the far side. They're going to give it to Clinton. He tries to get to the corner. It's strung out by the Mules, and that's a gain of, or a loss of a yard, actually. That's Marquez Cooper again coming from his linebacker position. He's coming like he shot out of a cannon. Clinton can fly. And he ran him down from the backside and still had enough left in the tank to put a pop on it. Mule's defense really stringing things out. Third down and eight for the Greyhounds at the Mule 44-yard line. Greyhounds one of seven on third down. Mules have dominated the numbers in this game, but it's only a 10-point game. Mills showing pressure. They're going to bring everybody. It might be the jailhouse. Nope, there, here comes pressure from the edge. Quick hitter, Matteo overthrown, and that'll bring up fourth down and eight. Daniel Soxie, boy, that mule defense. Oh, now we get a flag, late flag. This Mat- could be interesting. Matteo was over here on the sideline, joined one of the mules football players on the sideline and kind of gave a little push to him, and the mule player shoved him in the back, got the second shove, He's going to get the flag. Uh, this could be a 15-yard penalty first down. This, not, this might not be good. Well, and the, But the same thing happened right there. Gilbert is lined up 10 yards off and three yards inside. He just runs a a simple out route, and he's wide open. That's a killer right there. Well, and it happens on the sideline against an offensive player on the sideline. You've got to know, just keep your mouth shut, keep your cool. You're getting off the field. Let him draw, draw all he wants to. He's down 10 points, and he's going to have to punt. Now they have it first down. That's a killer, Danielle Soxy. It is because the defense has done a good job this half of making it second and long, third and long, and controlling the momentum, and then you go and get a flag on the sideline. So now it's first down and 10 for the Greyhounds. Matteo's a talker. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. He's the one that shoved uh, Gilbert in the back in the end zone. He's I, popped up John and people the whole game. You're just going to have to accept that he's talking. Let him talk. Matty O, the redshirt junior out of Fishers, Indiana. Edwards out of the gun. He's got McKellar to his left. Mules D showing pressure from the edge. Now they back out of it. Back to pass Edwards. Quick hitter. It's going to be caught. All kinds of room at the 20 down to the 16-yard line. And, and you're exactly right. I mean, when you're playing 10, 15 yards back, I mean, that's an easy, easy play. You're giving up the first down just by your positioning. Gilbert has got to move up. I know you maybe he don't he doesn't trust his speed against somebody like that. You You can't play 15 yards off the football. Yeah, he's, he's 10 yards back. Both, both cornerbacks are 10 yards. I mean, they're at the where they need to go to get a first down. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his right. They're going to give it to him. He's up the middle to the five and a touchdown. So the unsportsmanlike penalty allows the Greyhounds right back in the game as they have a 17-yard touchdown run right up the middle. 20 to 16, Mules by four with 6.35 to go in the third quarter. A lot of football still to play here. Boozman on for the PAT. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up. And it's no good. He missed it. He pushed it to the right. That's a miss on the PAT, and the Mules lead it by 4, 20-16. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. 
Division II student athletes have led a 10 year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple because we care. Who says we can't know how a Civil War soldier felt? Or what it's like to change the rules of the game. Ken Burns pioneered a new way to tell America's story. And only PBS gives filmmakers like him a place to push the boundaries of what TV can do. Give to this PBS station so stories like these are available now and for generations to come. Four. This Busman. is an important drive. That's Busman's, only Busman's, Busman's second miss all season. I'll get it down sometime. Only the second time he's missed an extra point all year. Boozman tees it up at the 35-yard line. He will put the right foot in it. High end over in kick, drilled. Turner is going to catch it five yards deep in the end zone, take a knee, and the Mules will have it first and ten. At the 25-yard line, a kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. Daniel Sox, do you notice any extracurricular activity by the Greyhounds? It looks to me there's a lot of extra pushing, shoving, a lot of talking going on down there. Like you guys have said, they've been talking all game, and mules have finally been fed up with it, but of course it's always second shove that gets caught. Yes, it is. Bowles looks to the sideline. He's got Kobe behind him. 6.35 to go in the third. Mules by four. Back to pass is Bowles. Fire is going to be caught at the 29 by Shea White. He gets to the 32. And now we get a late flag, and that might be a late hit on Brooke Bowles because the flag came out and Bowles was laying down. There's a lot of talking more talking. Yep. Well, that last kickoff, Christopher Ford ran by Salvador Garozo and threw a forearm in his back. Long after the ball had been called dead, whistles had blown. A lot of extra crap going on. I think that might have been on Joe Lambright, the senior out of Leo, Indiana. That might be the the game plan for the Greyhounds to come in here and really try to intimidate the Mules. That ain't going to happen. I mean, there have been teams that have tried that all year, and that does not happen. Now, now you've got to keep your coat cool, but... Right. Mules have it first and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Bowls out of the gun. They're going to shift Kobe to his right. Pressure by Indianapolis picked up. Bowls play action on the run. Gets it to Davidson, catches it at the 45, back across the grain, midfield into Indianapolis territory, keeps his feet pushing to the 46-yard line, and they're going to stop the play back at the 47. Well, and I think Zach Davidson's trying to make up for that. He's the one that got the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the sideline. Yep. I think he's trying to make up for that on that play right there, and I would say he did it. So now it's second down and four for the Mules. They're in. Greyhound territory. Flournoy to the near side. They're going to get Kobe out to the far side. Shea Wyatt to the near side as well. Now they're going to shift Kobe. And they'll give it to Turner up the middle. And really nowhere to run to. And he might pick up a yard. So now it's third down and three. Big third down right here for the Mules. You got the ball across midfield. You got a four-point lead. You got a got a big play and a big penalty to get you some positive yardage. Let's make something happen. Mills four of nine on third down. Mills will check to the sideline. Two to the near side, one to the far side. Winner gets Ferris State at Ferris State next Saturday. Back to pass Bowles. Quick hitter left side. Going up for it is Shea Wyatt at the 40, and that's a first down. No, that's Flournoy. That's twice this game he's gone up. That was Flournoy. Twice this game he's gone up. Made a great catch. Tucked it in just as he got hit by Joe Lambright. Makes the first down. His hands are like glue. I mean, they keep telling me that you throw it in his area and he's going to he's gonna go get it. I believe it. Two to the far side for the Mules. Tight formation, far hash. Now, Wyatt comes in motion. They're going to fake it to him. Bowles fires one. Going to be caught. That's Davidson. Spin move at the 32. 
Gets it down to the 31, and that's close to a first down, but a gain of nine on first. Well, he's spinning trying to get to the outside, and Landry Mavungu was able to make the tackle. Excuse me, uh, Lauren Strickland makes the tackle. He got a nice spin move to get some extra yardage, but just couldn't quite slip that tackle. Bowls out of the gun, second down, and a yard at the Hound 31. But Davidson in motion. Davidson in the slot. Play action, swinging out Slager, and that's going to be deflected at the line of scrimmage. Well, that was a nice design, too, if they had it. That's that play they did in the first half going the other way. They've kind of done that play twice. Yeah, fake it and then make that quick uh, zip pass out there to Slager and let him use his footwork and, and get something. And he had Florno out here blocking for him, just got knocked down before it got to him. Big play here, Danielle Soxie. Need to pick up that first down on third down and one. Out of score on this drive. Instead of going for a field goal, go for the t- need that touchdown. Here's Bowles. He's going to hand it off up the middle, and that's even second effort. It's going to be maybe a loss of two yards. Now it's fourth and three. Now what do you do? I don't know if you really want to punt from this position. So it's fourth and three from the Greyhound 33-yard line. Mules are going to keep the offense out there. Flournoy goes to the far side. Shea Wyatt to the near side. Slager didn't know he was supposed to be out there. They got plenty of time, 16 on the play clock. So now Slager gets the play from Brooke Bowles. They're going to shift Davidson to the near side, six on the play clock. Play action, Bowles in trouble. Quick cut, Davidson 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, and knocked out of bounds. Inside the 10-yard line, they snuck Davidson right across the middle, and nobody picked him up. Well, they are taking shots on Brooke Bowles because it was long after that ball was thrown. He was hit, and the guy threw him to the ground right in front of the official, no flag. But credit him for staying in there, making the pass to Davidson, and Davidson getting down the field. Bowles out of the gun. Kobe to his right. Mills go quick. Do they catch him? Yeah, they do. Offsides, free play. Oh, they're going to stop the play. Why do you stop the play? Well, Davidson started moving. As soon as he came across, Davidson released. So half the distance, still first down. Yeah, he started rocking just as the man came across the line of scrimmage. Nice replay, guys. So first down and goal from the three. Bowles has it. Hands it off to Kobe. He's got a seam, but he'll be wrapped up. Might have lost a yard. That got right back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and goal from the three. Big touchdown here. If the Mules can get it in and kick the extra point, then it'd be a two-score game. Second and goal. 2.19 to go in the third quarter, 20 to 16. Mules by four. Kobe to the right of Bowles, ball on the near hash. Flournoy to the near side, Rolls goes in motion to the far side. And here's a reverse, they flip it back to Slager, nowhere to go, and he's going to be wrapped up back at the 16-yard line. They gave it to Kobe, then tried to reverse it to Slager. And that went absolutely nowhere. So now it's third down and a ton. I'm not one to question our coaches because they know a lot more about this game than I do. But I I really wonder why we do so many things into the short side of the field. Because you start going to the right, then you reverse it to your left, then you try and come back again to the right, and everybody is there. So now it's third down and goal from the 16. Trips to the near side, going to put a man in motion. Now they're going to get Shea Wyatt going to the left. Bowles back to pass. Need to get it in the end zone. Fire right side. That'll be caught at the three-yard line. So they get a bunch of it back. But it's fourth down and goal from the three. What do the Mules do here? Do you go ahead and try to go for the touchdown, or do you go ahead and kick the field goal? And here comes the field goal unit. I think that's the right call. Go ahead and kick that field goal. You've done a nice job of getting the ball down there. You don't want to come away with no points just because you're getting greedy and you're you're a little bit arrogant and say, hey, we're going to punch this football in. Let's just get some points on the board. 20-yard field goal from the near hash for Knowlton. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up. 
And the kick is good. So the Mules tack on three, and they lead it by seven. 23 to 16 with 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. volunteering. I like to think that I have made a difference. That's enough. I don't need to be patted on the back. I've included my PBS station in my future plans. It's not a big gift, but something that will help them. Consider including KMOS in your plans. For more information, call 1-800-753-3436. Every little bit helps. If we can do a whole lot of little bits, then we've done a great service and the surrounding area. Located at 125 North Holden in downtown Warrensburg. That's 125 North Holden in downtown Warrensburg. 23-16, Mules lead it by seven. Last drive by the Mules. 12 plays, 72 yards, six minutes. Nice drive, but all they got out of it was a field goal. Hopefully that will not catch up to the Mules. High end over in kick. It's going to be taken by Matteo. He's to the 20, 25, up to the 30, and falls forward to the 32-yard line. That kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. Northwest leads Harding by a score of 7 to nothing. Wachita over Lindenwood, 28-24. Here it's 23-16 Mules, 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. That's what you got to love about playoff football. Every game's going to be a good game. Edwards out of the gun. He's got McKellar to his left. Edwards fires quick hitter. Left side caught Matteo at the 35. Just so much room. Then they try to tackle the ball, and he gets up to the 46. That's a gain of 16. Now you cannot... I don't know what else to say about it. You cannot play that far off the football because all they're going to do is run a little seven-yard hitch route or a quick slant or even an out route that's a longer throw, but they're going to have plenty of time to make the completion. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his left. Four seconds to go in the third quarter. McKellar gets it up close to midfield. That's a gain of three. It'll bring up second down and seven when we go to the fourth quarter. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. A degree in digital media production with an emphasis in sports communication will enhance your knowledge in multi-camera live sports productions in addition to writing for sports media. Our faculty members bring real-world experience to the classroom, and students can showcase their work through different media outlets, including live streaming under the MIAA network, UCM CTV, and digitalberg.com. For more information on this, please visit ucmo.edu forward slash DMP. From court to court and lane to lane under the lights or under the sun. No one delivers Division II sports like NCAA.com. The center of D2 is inside the NCAA.com hub. With the exclusive highlights of every sport and live broadcasts of every Division II championship found nowhere else. Make NCAA.com yours. The home of Division II college sports. 7, 91-21. Second down and 7 at midfield for the Greyhounds. Mules lead it by a score of 23. <laughs> Keller has it. Right up the middle. He'll get to the Mule 45-yard line. Ball carrier. 
That'll bring up third down and short. You know, I figured out in that first half, one of the reasons that UND has only given up 12 sacks this season is T.J. Edwards. He's done a really nice job of extending plays, of avoiding the pressure, keeping his eyes down the football field, and, and whether it's complete or not, he's not giving up the sack. Hill's a little bit tighter on coverage here. Edwards out of the gun. Mules are going to show pressure. They give it to McKellar up the middle. He'll get the first down to the Mule 42-yard line. Got to bring up a first down and 10. But, you know, the thing is, if the Mules' corners will come up and play tighter, play that press coverage like that, you can't do it the whole game. But mix it up a little bit. Come up and play a little press cover. Knock the receivers off of their route, off of their timing. But then you're going to have to have your safeties make sure they're getting over the top you're really going to be able to disrupt the pass game a little bit. You just can't sit back, and here we go again, sitting back 8, yeah, 10 yards off the, pa- off the ball. Yeah, they're 9 yards back now. Clinton out there at running back, fake it to him. Edwards will run it up the middle, get it to the 36-yard line. Gain of 7. That's surpri- second down and 3. Excuse me, Greg, I'm surprised we haven't seen him run the football more. He's gone for 374 yards and 7 touchdowns this season. That's only his second carry of the game. Well, they really haven't really haven't needed to. McKellar and Clinton are doing a pretty good job running the football on their own. Clinton to the left of Edwards. Edwards out of the gun. Quick hitter, thrown left side and dropped. That was at the first down marker and a drop by the Greyhounds on the far side. That'll bring up third down and four. That's Ryan Topper. He had the big touchdown catch earlier in the game, but they also had the one that he had on the post got knocked away. Right now, the Mules have got to come up and play on this one. I believe they got to come up and play press coverage on the receivers. Don't give them the five, seven yard pass route. Third down and four, line of scrimmage, the Mule 36 yard line, probably two down territory. Topper to the near side, Madio and Bell to the far side. Now they put Topper in motion, fake it to him, give it to to Keller, and he'll get to the 30, 25, 20 down the sideline to the 15, and then out of bounds at the 12 yard line. Cody Bell, good tackle on the sideline, but not before Toriano Clinton gets a huge gain on third down. We talked about coming into this game, they had converted almost 51% on third down. They had were 0-6 in the first half. Didn't expect that to last. The Greyhounds can tie it up with a touchdown, 12.53 to go in the game. First down and 10 at their 11. Edwards out of the gun, put a man in motion to the far side. Here's a little throwback. Now, Edwards in trouble. He eludes pressure, still eludes, and gets down to the 11-yard line to the original line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up second down and 10 from the 11. Boy, he can wear out a defense just because he is so elusive. He does such a good job of of sensing where the pressure is coming, rolling away from it, extending the play. Again, he keeps does a nice job keeping his eyes down the field. Secondary has done a good job of covering the receivers, so he didn't have anybody to go to. But that can just really start to wear down your defensive line and your linebackers. Second down and 10. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his right. They give it to McKellar, and he's hit in the backfield and brought down at the 15-yard line. A loss of four. Big, big defensive play by the Mules. That was Jacob Wiggins, who's listed as the team's stud, and he was one right there. Fought through the block. Gets gets, uh, McKellar down around the ankles. Does a great job of holding on to making that tackle. Boy, Daniel Soxie, that was a big, big play by that Mules defensive line. The Mules defense seems to really step it up when their opposing offense comes into the red zone. They play so much harder and makes the other team lose yards. Here's Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his left. One to the far side, one to the near side. Back to pass. Edwards looking. Little pump fake. Now he's going to run to the near side. He's in trouble. He's going to be flushed and brought down at the 15. Mules defense getting after it. We talk about it all the time with Coach Boda, Joe. When you get down and get that shorter field, it's so hard to run your stuff. Well, Zach Oshman, again, just the consistent pressure, the constant, the motors running, not giving up, not stopping. Brought pressure from the outside, ran him down on the inside. It does make it so much tougher because you've got such a shortened field. But you can't do it without a defensive line that brings pressure like the Mules. Here's a 31-yard field goal attempt right down the middle of the field. 
Good snap, good hold. Kick is up, and uh, did he get it? He did. He made it. So it's 23-19. Mills by four, 10-40 to go in the game. We got a heck of a ball game here at Walton Stadium, Kennedy Field. You're listening to Mills Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. I support one student in college with a scholarship. Just the way I want to pass on a legacy of education, I would like to pass PBS on to the next generation. For more information, call 1-800-753-3436. I like to think that PBS is concerned with our soul. If your soul is in the right place, you're in giving back. plays 55 yards four minutes 50 seconds Phil goal from 30 yards good makes it 23 19 mules by four Greg everybody on the two deep for the mules today is back next season they may give up some yards they were once while I may give up some points but this mules defense is ferocious and it is all coming back next year both Teams have run 52 plays. The Mules, 364 in yardage, 281 for Indy. Just a four-point game, though. Boozman puts the right foot in it. High end over end kick, angling towards the sideline, and the Mules let it go out of bounds. That's the second kickoff out of bounds for Boozman. The kickoff is brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at Warrensburg collision.com i don't think they're doing that on purpose i just think that's and the mules will have it at the 35 yard line this is a huge huge drive for the mules they need to take some time off the clock and they have got to get in the end zone if they get it in the end zone then you're two scores up being up by 11 is way better than being up by four bowls out of the gun he's got turner to his right rolls in the slot one to the near side, one to the far side. Bowls back to pass, fires one. Caught Shea Wyatt. He sits down at the 45 and hauls that one in, and that'll be a first down. The score is 23-19, and we have the number one and number three scoring offenses in the country coming right at it today. I don't even know what that means. I guess that means our both these defenses are really doing a good job. Both these defenses said enough of the offense. We're, we're here to play, too. Turner to the right of Bowles. Two to the far side, one to the near side. That'll be Shea Wyatt. And they play action to Turner, and a quick hitter thrown out to the far side and overthrew Drew Slager. So second down and 10 for the Mules at their own 45-yard line. Brooke looked like he wanted to throw that one, had to bring it back down. I don't know if Slager got held up, and he didn't get to deliver the ball when he wanted to. That would have been a pass that you have to put some air under and kind of time it in over the top of the defender. But then as long as it throws it is, that's risky for a pick six. Exactly. So. Bowls out of the gun. Tight formation. Play action. He's going to roll to his right. Has Shea Wyatt. He leans out. Catches it at the 45. And that's going to be another first down. Shea Wyatt able to lay out at the 45 of the Greyhounds and haul it in. Shea Wyatt has the hands that can catch spit in a wind. That guy can go out and get the football wherever it is thrown. He was laid out and got that football. Spit in the wind. Huh? You can use that. I'm thinking about it. Out of the gun will be Bowles. Turner to his right. Bowles play action. Back to pass. Steps up into the pocket. He is going to be hit and brought down at his own 49-yard line. That will be a loss of six. 
as Uindy brings the pressure. They're really starting to bring the pressure up right now. You're absolutely right, Greg. The Mules' offensive line is doing a good job of picking it up initially, but it's the guys on the delay that are coming through, and it's just too many guys coming at him. He doesn't have time to get to his setup point, step up into the pocket, and deliver the football. Second down and 16 from their own 49-yard line. Got to get to the 35-yard line of Uindy. They're showing pressure again. They're bringing everybody. Bowls back to pass. Quick hitter and miscommunication. He was trying to get that over to Cam Saunders, who was just streaking down the field, and Bowles threw a quick hitter to the far side. So now it's third down and 16, and this drive is in danger of stalling. Well, the problem is Brooke is getting pounded back there, too. They're bringing everybody. The running backs are doing a good job of stepping up, but they don't usually have to do that because they're usually out in the pattern as well. So now trips to the near side for Bowles. Mules lead it by just four, nine minutes to go in the game. Third down and 16. Bowles straight drop. He's got time this this time and fires it across the middle. Shea Wyatt at the 29-yard line of the Greyhounds. That's a gain of 19 and a first down. Big play by Shea Wyatt. With a man draped all over his back. Landry Mavungu was all over his back, and Shea Wyatt still pulls that football in. Credit the pass of Brooke Bowles. Had some zip on it, didn't it? Got there quickly. Right where it needed to be. First down and 10 for the Mules. This has been a nice drive to this point. They're at the Greyhound 29-yard line. Bowles out of the gun. He's got Turner to his left. They're going to give it to Turner. He'll run it up the middle. Gain a yard and brings up second down and nine. Well, that's just a line of scrimmage, second down and ten. You want to try and still keep running the football, take some time off the clock, get something positive on first down, help out that passing game. Wind picking up a little bit more out there. Shea Wyatt now has eight receptions for 153 yards and a touchdown. Cool, crisp day here in the Berg. It's getting a little cold up here in the press box. I was going to say, I didn't bring a jacket because I, I thought it was going to be up here where it's nice and toasty. Bowles out of the gun. Option right side. Throw it back to Bowles. Flea flicker down the field to Davidson. Oh, just off his fingertips. That was a gorgeous play and could not finish it. Well, Connor Steve did a great job of staying under that pass. He never did look back, but he timed it just perfectly to reach up with it and knock that ball away just as the ball was getting there. Might have gotten lucky because he wasn't even looking for the yeah, football. Yeah, that was a little early. Let's watch the replay on that, but that was a little early. Now it's third down and 10. Bowls out of the gun. They're going to shift Davidson to the near side. Fake the swing out pass. Bowles keeps it to the 25. Cannot get the first down. He'll get it down to the 23-yard line, and that'll bring up fourth down and about three. You've got the win, so it's a... They're going for it. I was going to say it'd be about a 40-yard field goal attempt. Mills are two of two on fourth down. This is a huge play. 7-13 to go in the game. Look for the pressure. Here it comes. Bowles back to pass. Quick hitter caught at the 15-yard line. The spin move. Shea Wyatt, five. Touchdown. Touchdown, Mules. They score it on fourth and four from the 23-yard line. How do you not have him double covered on fourth and de- uh, fourth and four? Shea Wyatt was a wide open, not even a man on top of him. All he has to do is make the catch, turn up field and sprint, and then gets a great block on the corner by Zach Davidson. Another touchdown catch, Danielle Soxie by Shea Wyatt. He deserves every right to be at first team all MIAA. He has been incredible all season long. Here's Knowlton on for the PAT. Seven minutes to go in the game, and the kick is up. Oh, did he make it? He did. Boy, that just snuck in. 30 to 19, Mules by 11. Seven minutes to go at Walton Stadium, Kennedy Field. Winner of this game gets Ferris State. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network. A degree in digital media production with an emphasis in digital journalism will develop your skill set for work in multimedia outlets, including print, online, and broadcast. 
Our faculty members bring real-world experience to the classroom, and students can showcase their work online at digitalberg.com and in the student-led newspaper, The Mule Skinner. For more information on this or other concentrations within the Digital Media Production Program, please visit ucmo.edu forward slash DMP. What if news wasn't just a commodity, but a commitment? The fiscal cliff is a fiscal suicide. Why shouldn't we explore every side of the story? The Syrian army had pulled back. Where can you turn for news you can trust? How do we make sense of something like this? On PBS, we believe journalism should never stop asking questions. Give to your PBS station and support independent journalism. We answer to no one but you. Three of three on fourth down in this game. Brooke Bowles, 25 of 35, 353 yards, three touchdown passes. The Eels have rushed it for 76, 429 yards of offense. Here's Matteo at the ten, two yard line. He's to the 10, 15, 20. And oh, he is hammered at the 20 yard line. That kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision. The official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today. WarrensburgCollision.com. Special teams showed up when they needed to. Right they there. did right there. That was a big, big hit on Matteo. That was huge. Third down has been big in this game. Mules are 6 of 14 on third down. UN, UND was number one in the nation in opponents third or in third down defense. They are only 3 of 10. And they were 13th in the nation on third down on offense. So, Mules have done a great job on third down both sides of the football today. I would think UND thinks this is a big, big possession down two. Down 11 points. They're going to give it to McKellar. And he tries to go airborne at the 23. And he lands right into the hands of a Mule defender. And then they start clapping each other and singing songs or doing whatever they're doing over there. Zach Ashman made the tackle. Connor Bell was the first man up. I don't think I've ever seen a defensive line from UCM that is as good as this defensive line across the board. Too and deep. deep. And deep. Yep. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his right. He wants to throw. Quick hitter left side. A little bit too high for Bell. Which you got to put that on the money. He's only 5'7", 150. You can't overthrow that. Well, he's not been under a lot of pressure or wasn't under a lot of pressure that time. He's got to step in and make that throw because you've got Andre Gilbert, who's a great open field tackler against a little scat back out there at wide receiver. Soxie, you can really feel the momentum swinging to the Mule D. Oh, everyone's so pumped up. The defense is all in agreement with what they're doing, and they know exactly how to get it done. Here we go, third down and seven. Greyhounds, three of ten on third down. Edwards out of the gun. McKellar to his left. Edwards back to pass. He's under pressure now. Here they come. They're going to get him. Ubong Udom rips him down. The ball comes out, but he gets it back. Ubong Udom, another sack all the way back to the 10-yard line. Well, if Udom get it, didn't get him, Ashman was because he shot right up the middle of the field. And that's what I was talking about. You're going to have to bring pressure up the middle and from the outside, and they both came and got there today. So now it's fourth down and a mile. Line of scrimmage is Pine Street. <laughs> With 5.53. they got to get it to the Clinton to the get game. the first down. Yes, they do. Out of the end zone is going to be Boozman. Devontae stands at the 32-yard line of the Greyhounds. Kobe at midfield. It's a good snap. Right foot gets into it. Wilkerson catches it at the 45, has a seam to the 40, and up to the 35-yard line of Uindy. And you can tell now by the body language of the Greyhounds that it is crunch time. I think the Mules only had 10 men on the field for that punt return. They're feeling so confident they're playing with less players. Yeah, they got to save guys. Got to gotta save them. You get the feeling right now, you put this one in the end zone, you might be able to go ahead and start buying your tickets for Michigan because the Mules are rolling right now defensively. Offensively, they're playing with a lot of confidence. Bowles will be out of the gun. He'll have Kobe to his right. Trips to the far side. Wouldn't be surprised to see some handoffs here. Bowles out of the gun. Nope, back to pass. Quick hitter. Fires left side. Nearly intercepted. Caught Shea Wyatt. No, it's Flournoy off his chest, and he's down to the 21. A gain of 14 and a first down. Man, Brooke Bowles has a strong arm. He had so much zip on that from this near hash all the way back to the far side. Almost got it picked off. Went right over the top of a defender. 
Flournoy is able to stay focused, but let that ball bounce and still pulls it in. Bowls out of the gun. He's got Kobe to his right. Two to the near side, one to the far side. Check the sideline for the play. Again, I would expect a handoff sometime soon here. But we're not. Back to pass. Firing left side. Caught. Flournoy, 15. A swim move and out of bounds at the 11. Get out of there, Ryan. Get out of there. Don't get Let caught him. up in it. You're up 30-19. Let him talk all he wants to. A lot of talking from Strickland. PCMR Computing Services supports the Mules football team. PCMR, PCMR Computing Services can help you with all your computer, mobile phone, and game console repair needs. They offer fast, reliable, quality service. 125 North Holden in downtown Warrensburg. Trips to the far side. Kobe to the left of Bowles as they check the play. Now they're going to shift Kobe to the right. Bowles out of the gun. Bowles hands it off to Kobe. Left side, 10, seam, 5, dives over the pylon. Touchdown! Touchdown, Mules. Kobe Wilkerson launches himself like an Atlas rocket at the 3. Clears the pylon, and the Mules tack on six more. Kip Jammer might be looking at him saying, hey, you want to come high jump for the Mules track and field team? He went high over that goal wow. line. That was an impressive drive, Daniel Soxie. Kobe Wilkerson again with an amazing touchdown, and the Mules are looking fantastic. They're ready to go finish out this game. 4-12 to go in the game. Knowlton on for the PAT. Good snap, good hole, kick up, kick good. 37-19. The Mules poured it on here in the fourth quarter over the Greyhounds of the University of Indianapolis. Well, our CTV crew ran a replay here just a minute ago of the first pass of this drive, and it was a drive that almost wasn't because that ball went right through the defender's hands. Oh, yeah. I thought it was going to be an interception. Yeah, I, and I thought, from here, I thought it was a little over his hands. No, it went right through his mitts, right into Ryan Flournoy's uh, stomach. He's able to make the catch and get the first down, or this, this drive had already been over, but Football gods are smiling on the mules today, and they're able to go up 37-19. FNC Bank offers the ultimate in banking convenience. With mobile and online banking, FNC Bank locally owned and committed to the community. Wishing the UCM Mules football team the best of luck in their postseason play. Go Mules, FNC Bank located at the corner of Burkharth and Young in Warrensburg. Matty O and Clinton back deep for the Greyhounds. Diddle will tee it up at the 35-yard line. We're going to have a different post game coming your way. I'm going to need all the help of Joe Moore to help me get the technology. We're going to try to bring you the press conference of both coaches and players from the media room, from the NCAA media room. Fingers crossed. Diddle. Right foot. High end over end kick. One yard into the end zone. Here comes Matteo to the 10-15. Spins at the 20, and he'll be wrapped up there. That kickoff brought to you by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today. WarrensburgCollision.com. Yeah, that was ill-advised to bring that football out. He was on the about two yards deep in the end zone. Only gets it to the 22-yard line. Gave up three yards there. He takes the knee, then it's at the 25. And then he took a big pop when he got out. Here's Edwards out of the gun. Edwards wants to throw. Looking left. Fires left. Caught at the... 29-yard line and out of bounds. Well, now the Mules will give up some of those shorter underneath routes and make them work the ball down the field. Of course, Indy's going to be running out because they want to get to the sideline and be able to stop the clock every chance they get. Ball stops on a first, or clock stops on a first down, but they want to get every stop that they can. Clock moving at 343. Back to pass Edwards. Again, a quick hitter. Caught at the 29. Mules will give that all day long, and it'll be a first down, and then wrapped up and thrown out of bounds is McKellar. Let's try and get you updated on what's going on. Oh, my goodness. Northwest beat Harding 7-6. to six. Wow. I wonder if they missed the PAT. We'll have to look that one up. 38-38, Lindenwood and Wachita. Back to pass, Edwards. Edwards wants to go deep. He's got a man on the sideline. It is 
caught, and they're going to give it to him. They're going to say he was inbounds. Well, that's a nice grab. Right on the sideline, man on it, Maurice Robinson, 6'4", 203. Trying to tell who the cornerback was on that far sideline. Looks like it was... Is it Jordan Hill playing corner over there? Edwards back to pass, looking left. Now he's flushed. Get a flag, that's going to be a hold, and then he just throws it out of bounds. Yeah, Ubong Udom had him dead to rights and got pulled from the backside. Big Brothers, Big Sisters supports the Mules football team. A huge thanks to the Mules football team for volunteering to stand alongside Big Brothers, Big Sisters to defend the potential abuse in Johnson County. Good luck and go get a Mules. Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Johnson County, 608 North College Street in Warrensburg. Holding on U Indy. That was Jordan Hill in there, cornerback for the Mules. Listed as a running back, but he's 5'10", 165, going against Maurice Robinson, 6'4", 203. Had good position. Just Robinson's able to get up over the top make the catch. 2.51 to go in the game. Edwards out of the gun, trips to the near side. McKellar to his left, back to pass. A lot of pressure by the Mules. It's going to be swung out and caught at the 21-yard line. and That'll bring up second down and about now. You know, the Internet is a wonderful thing. A big Mule fan. Down in Oklahoma City, a buddy of mine listening, he says grandkids are listening, they're enjoying the game. I mean, that's awesome you can be in Oklahoma City and pick up the ball game. Yep. Edwards out of the gun, straight drop, looking to his right, timing pattern into the corner, and that's going to be off the fingertips. And here comes a couple of flags for pass interference. I think there might have been a hold down there. Well, there was, but why are they waiting until the ball's already over the head and out of the back of the end zone? Then they both throw the flags. They could have thrown the flags when they was at the 10-yard line. Had to hold him the whole way. Again, you got a young guy in there. That's uh, Jordan Hill, who's listed as a redshirt freshman running back, playing pass coverage, doing a good job. He's, this is the first time I've seen him in the game, a defensive back. So they're talking things over. Richter Excavating and Plumbing, a full-service excavating and plumbing company providing residential and commercial services. Richter Excavating and Plumbing, locally owned and celebrating 26 years in business. Richter Excavating and Plumbing proudly supports the UCM Mules football team called Richter Excavating and Plumbing at 422-83-99. Pass interference on the defense, 37-19. Mules lead it by 18 with 228 to go in the game. Winner takes on Ferris State. Northwest, they are to beat Harding by a score of 7-6. to six. That's a long ride from... Oh. Maryville to Searcy. Edwards back to pass, looking to his left. Fires one, caught, and a touchdown for Matteo. And they'll tack on six more, making it 37-25 with 2.23 to go. It's a good drive by the Greyhounds. They only took a couple minutes off the clock. and get, get within 12 now with an extra point, make it within 11. you got to believe they're going to go for the onside kick here in just a minute. Absolutely. There's still football to be played here. The Hounds have three timeouts left. Looks like they're going to go for two here to try to make it a ten-point game. I got a number for you here in just a minute. And that's too many men on the field as McKellar runs off the field. Back him up five. You ready for this? What's that? Harding, 56 carries, 151 yards. They did not throw a pass in that football game. Did they game. miss a PAT? Is that yeah, they did. They did. Tristan Tucker scored a touchdown, so you know they got the touchdown, but no extra point. I wonder if they went for two. That's what I'm looking at. Yep, went for two with 114 to go in the fourth oh, okay. quarter and didn't get it. John Albert, accounting and tax in Warrensburg, specializes in tax preparation for individuals, LLC partnerships, and corporations. If your business needs assistance in payroll and bookkeeping, you need John Albert Accounting and Tax located at 454 East Gay Street. Edwards back to pass for the two-point conversion. He's going to be flushed to his left. A stiff arm tries to run it in. He reaches the ball across the goal line and gets it in. And now it's a 10-point game, 37 to 27. It was Tommy Carter on the tackle, but... 
TJ Edwards was just long enough at six foot two hundred pounds to be able to stiff arm with one arm and reach out with the other. He got brought down about the one, but he's able to reach that ball out there and get it across the goal line. Nice drive by U Indy. Keep in mind the Mules were allowing, keeping everything in front. You know they just that was supposed to be a time burn type of thing. Took him one minute and 42 seconds, five plays, 78 yards. Six-yard touchdown pass to Aaron Mateo. Well, they did a great job of executing their passes to the sideline and able to get the ball and get out of bounds. Edwards is 17 of 30, 200 yards, couple of touchdowns, sacked one time. Bowles has had a great game, 27 of 37, 377, three touchdowns. Mules have rushed it for 87 464 yards for the Mules, 345 for you, Indy. And here comes the onside kick, right? I mean, you have everybody out there. You got Twee House, you got Flournoy, Slager. Turner's going to be back deep. You got Kobe on that far side over there, too, with Devin Smith. So all your, all your hands, guys, is they are showing onside kick to the far side. It's got to go 10 yards. Onside kick, it does, and it's going to be caught by the Mules. Ooh, that's a big hit. That should be a flag. The catch and big hit. They're trying to eliminate that on these onside kicks, but the Mules will have it. First down and 10 kickoff presented by Warrensburg Collision, the official collision center of UCM Athletics. Schedule your estimate appointment today at warrensburgcollision.com. Well, here's a question for you. You're going to go for an onside kick. You execute it well as far as getting it on the ground. Did you see who they kicked it to? Shea Wyatt. Yeah, right to him. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe kick it to somebody else. Or do the reverse kick. Yeah. Do a reverse bicycle. Put a little soccer move on it. 2.23 to go. Bowles is going to keep it up the middle. He'll be brought down at the 44-yard line, and that'll be a timeout called by Harding. Warrensburg Collision is the premier full-service collision center in Johnson County. From minor scratches and dents to full collision repair, they do it all. Warrensburg Collision is locally owned and a proud supporter of the UCM football team. Go Mules. If this score holds, we will head to Big Rapids, Michigan. It's about 10 hours away. We talked about coming in this game that Indianapolis wants to live and die by the rush game. They come into this game averaging almost 270 yards per carry, or excuse me, 270 yards per game rushing the football. They've rushed for 145. They allow just 58 yards rushing per game. Mules have now rushed the football for 90 yards in this game. So they've not been able to do what they wanted to do as far as running the football, and the Mules have been able to do what they've wanted to do as far as throwing it. Bowles out of the gun. Turner behind him. They're going to hand it off to Turner, and he'll run it to the 45-yard line. And another timeout called by Lindenwood. 41-38. Lindenwood just went on top of Wachita with 124 to go in that game. And if you want the Mules to play another home game, you need Lindenwood to win that. And then you need the Mules actually to go to Ferris and win. And then you need Lindenwood to go to Northwest and win. And if that happened, we'd be back here in a couple of weeks. Is that all? But all that that all has to happen. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's going to be really hard for all that to happen. Yes, it could. Yeah. It could. Absolutely, Absolutely could. it could. Playoff football, anything can happen there. Greyhounds now out of timeouts with 2.14 to go. Mules up 10. Third and, what, eight? Mules need a first down here, and they may be able to just start icing this. Let's go, down to, that first down. let's go down to Danielle Sox. Is that wind picking up a little bit? It's been kind of blowing quite a bit here in the second half, hasn't it? Yeah, it's cooled back down a little bit. The wind has died down, um, but in the third quarter it was very heavy. But now all the sun has gone, and it is very chilly down here on the Mule sideline. I was going to say, the Indianapolis yeah. fan is probably nice and toasty on that far yeah. side in the sun. Bowles out of the gun. He's got Turner behind him. Hounds have one timeout left. They're going to give it to Turner. Races to the near side. He's brought down at the 45, and the Greyhounds will call their final timeout with 2.09 to go, and the Mules have to punt it away. But the Mules are up 10, 37 to 27, so you're kind of in a point in time in the game, Joe, where you can really kind of milk milk things along. Yeah, and I looked at the wrong line on the scoreboard. I thought the, the Greyhounds already run out of timeouts. You don't want to throw the football there because if it's incomplete, you stop the clock for them. Right. So that's why they ran the football there on third and eight. Now it's 2.09 to go. Your defense has been playing really, really well. 
Just got to get him back yeah. out there. They set the football, start that clock, and Mules will milk that one down and then punt it away and then get that defense out there and work to get that stop because you went uh, – Indianapolis has scored twice. So, what's the attitude on that sideline, Soxie? We are just everyone is just uh, hoping that clock ticks down and we can. Well, the mules can stop hard. Um, Indianapolis here. Punting formation for the mules. Davidson stands at his forty. Bell, dangerous punt returner, back at his ten. Good snap. High spiraling kick. Great job by Davidson. You do not want to give him an opportunity to return that. That's why he's first team all MIAA punter right there. He didn't have a huge punt average, but he made some huge punts when he had to, and that was one right there. Puts him on the 10 yard line. That's big time. Now they got to go 90 yards. You got two minutes and three seconds. Got to go 90 yards, get a touchdown, get the onside kick, and then go score again. This Mule's defense got to play tough over the top. Don't let anything long go over your head. And then wrap up. Make tackles. Edwards will be out of the gun. Mules are playing two deep safeties. Not going to bring any extra pressure. Edwards has time. Now he's flushed. Runs to the near side. He's to the 15-20, and then he'll step out of bounds. 154 to go in the game. That play took 15 seconds off the clock. Good job by the safety, staying over the top. Both corners came up and played press coverage with the safeties playing over the top. And that press, that throws that timing off a little bit. 154 to go in the game. Mules trying to get their second home playoff win. Mules have never lost a home playoff game. They've only played one. False start. That'll be a penalty on the University of Indy. The Mules beat West Texas A&M 55-35 back in 2010. That's their only home playoff game they've had. And again, I was out in Colorado State working on my Ph.D. that season. They made the best run in school history. I've been waiting all my life to watch that, <laughs> and I missed the whole darn thing. Edwards will be out of the gun. He'll have McKellar to his right, two to the near side, two to the far side. Edwards back to pass, looking. Quick hitter, nearly intercepted by Gilbert. Now we're going to get a flag. DJ Edwards has intended for Davion Bell incomplete. We're calling the flag now. They're going to call pass interference? Yeah, they are. I believe so. Well, that's kind of chintzy. Been a little inconsistent with the pass interference. There's been some pass interference called today. That very legitimately was, but they've been a little bit inconsistent with it. Ah. No, it's a bad no. call. Andre looked like he was finishing that route. The bell was already going down, and he finished the route. First down and ten for the Greyhounds with 151 to go. Mills by ten. We hope to bring you all the post-game interviews from down in the press room. Edwards steps up to the pocket, fires across the middle, and that is no good, incomplete. And that pressure is now starting to get to him. He's not able to set his feet. He's having to keep moving. Makes it harder to make accurate throws. Came into this game, he's completed almost 65% of his passes, but just not been able to get set up today to make good throws. We hope to visit with Coach Campbell after the game. We hope that's going to be a possibility. We'll see. Edwards out of the gun. He's got McKellar to his right, second down and 10. Fire left side, going to be incomplete, and Lindenwood has gone down to Washita Baptist, the number two team in the region, and beat them. Wow. So, Mills are still, they should be able to hold on and win this game, but Lindenwood, the only team to beat Indianapolis this season. Yeah. Now they're going to go to Maryville. To take on Northwest. That's a team that Northwest probably thought they were going to go on the road to Arkadelphia. Now they're going to get another home game. Edwards out of the gun. Back check. to pass. Looking. Check. Still looking. Fires Sound across the middle. Incomplete. And that'll check. bring up check. fourth down Sound. and ten. 
Well, they just have not. Davion Bell is a dangerous player. He's not been a part of this game today at all. 35 receptions, 599 yards coming into this one. But today he's got three carries for or three receptions for 31 yards. That's it. One carry for three yards. And able to get going on the return game. And he was a big part of their offense. So two GAC teams have already lost today. There's one team out of the GLIAC, and you're looking at them. I mean, out of the GLVC. Indy out of the gun on fourth down. Their final play if they can't convert. Edwards in trouble. He's going to rush it to the 25-30. Has the first down and out of bounds at the 37-yard line with a minute 26 left to go. Boy, this mule secondary has done a great job down the stretch here of staying on top of receivers, keeping them covered, and the defensive line and linebackers done a great job of pursuit and pressuring the quarterback so he can't get set and get the time he wants to step up and make a throw. That time just lost a little contain inside. He's able to squirt up the middle and get the first down. Trips to the near side, one to the far side. Edwards back to pass. No timeouts. Fires across the middle, and that's incomplete. Brings up second down and 10. Cody Bell again, the second, uh, second team all MIAA that time. He's leading uh, leading tackler for this team. Staying on top of the receiver, stripping down when the ball got there, knocking it free. The Mules are in great position to win this game, but I don't see the the relief on that sideline just yet. I think we will shortly, though. Second down and 10. They're all up and they're all watching, that's for sure. There's no team meetings being held at the moment. Back to pass. Edwards wants to go deep down the near side, and that's going to fall between two Greyhounds. And incomplete. That'll bring a third down and 10. A couple of the routes that the Greyhounds have run today are really confusing to me because they had Topper and Mateo within five yards of each other. So they almost become another defender. They both had defenders right on top of them. And then they've got another player right with them. Mules are going to call a timeout here, 37-27. Mules by 10, 114 to go in the game. Mules have run 68 plays for 468 yards. 372 on 67 plays for UND. They've thrown it for 200. Oh, there's that baby shark <laughs> thing again. They've rushed it for 172. Mules have thrown it for 377 and rushed it for 89. The last two weeks running the football has been tough on the Mules, but to be fair, they'll be going against two of the best rush defenses in the nation. Well, they've run the ball and made the plays when they had to. Even last week, they made some big runs when they had to. Today, they've really done a good job, and they've used that run to establish the passing game. They've, they've made the runs so effective and used them so efficiently that UND could just sit there and put the guys in the box and stop it. Or they, or I'm sorry, they couldn't just drop guys back in coverage because then they're gonna, they know the Mules could just run it on them. So you don't have to get a ton of yards in your running game. You just have to make it effective enough to open up your pass game. So here we go, third down and 10 for Indy. And they're doing what the Mules want them to do, take a ton of time off the clock. And they're still not to the 40-yard line. Edwards back to pass, looking. Fires one to the sideline, and that's going to be incomplete. Edwards, 17 of 36. Bowles has had a really good game, 27 of 37, no picks. And knock on wood, the Mules have not turned it over against Indianapolis. And, boy, this is a takeaway machine at ball club. Yeah, they've got a lot of interceptions, a lot of fumble recoveries. They get to quarterback a lot. How about Jordan Hill coming into this game? Playoff football, listed as a running back, a 5'10", 165-pound redshirt freshman, now playing cornerback. I don't know I've seen him play cornerback all year. He stepped up today, and he's made some nice plays. He has. Hasn't really made a play, but he's prevented. He's stayed right on receivers. Fourth down for the Greyhounds. Back to pass Edwards. Play of the game. If they can stop him, he's going to be wrapped up. Now he's going to escape. He's in trouble. Runs to the far side, wants to get rid of it downfield. Ball's going to be tipped away and incomplete. No flags, and that's going to do it. The Mules will win the playoff game against the Greyhounds of UND at Walton Stadium, Kennedy Field. Now, Danielle Soxie, that sideline is celebrating. Oh, yes, they are. They are so excited to go. They are running off the field, pumped up, cheering, getting the crowd into it. It's awesome down here. 
Caleb Hinkis was back on the coverage that time. Guy of much maligned today. They've been able to get over the top of him. Haven't completed anything. But that time he stayed right with the receiver, timed it up his jump, knocked that ball away, coming in, having to make an emergency start because Dylan Price out with an injury. And the Mules are moving on. 37-27. Mules are going to win it by 10 as Brooke Bowles takes a knee. He needs to do that one more time in this ball game is in the books and the mules are perfect two and oh at home in the playoffs and on the road on saturday to take on ferris state in big rapids michigan the other second round game will have lindenwood going to northwest and that'll do it brooke bowles takes the knee and the mules get the win 37 to 27 in front of the home crowd over the university of indianapolis greyhounds at Walton Stadium, Kennedy Field. Good win for the Mules here today. We have a great postgame show coming up for you, we think. We hope to visit with B.J. Campbell, Mules defensive coordinator here momentarily, and we're going to try to cover all the press conferences for you uh, being live streamed. We're going to try to dial into that as well. 37-27, Mules get the win. You're listening to Mules Football on the UCM Sports Radio Network.